I've said some hurtful and hateful things when drunk and drunkenly punched him twice. Oh my god, I didn't see that. She's put his hands on him? She has put her hands on him. Yeah. Wow. Drunk. I don't give a f if she's drunk or not. There, that's the difference between equality and equity. Got home from work yesterday in a good mood. We were both getting along. My husband was going to take a nap and I wanted to go out. So I told him I was going to the gas station. When I was getting ready to leave, I told him I was going to wear something cute so that maybe someone would try to flirt with me. This is why I sent this email to How do you think your dad would feel if he saw you doing that? Because as a father, if my daughter was treating a man the way that you're treating your husband and acting the way that you're acting, I would I would be very disappointed as a father. Thanks to Peaches mostly, I can see clearly what my role is as my man's wife. I know and understand that it is my responsibility to make sure he's loved, cherished, and prioritized above anyone else. As much as I thought putting our children first along with work and everything else would get me what I longed for from him, she proved to me that I was sadly mistaken. And we are back. We're back. Episode 44. I don't know. It is. Because I just edited 43 yesterday morning and uploaded it today to the, the podcast thing. Okay. <clears throat> we are we are doing the thing. Trying to. Yep, trying to. Uh, we are finally getting caught up. Episodes, I think, all the way up to R&R 18 is done. Um, 18 is the one the episode with Nikita. That one's currently being edited. Mm -hmm. um, we have... Interviews lined up for this month. Things are doing what it's supposed to be doing. This episode probably won't release until the 23rd, I think. Yeah, 23rd. Not bad for today being the 5th. It is not bad. Yep. Which means we're finally getting ahead again, which is what I need to, to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. So, coffee dropped. Coffee's doing okay. Yep. Um, <clears throat> T-shirt drop probably happened last night by the time that you heard this. We have to get those submitted to Jordan. Mm -hmm. Hopefully the blanket hoodies will have gone out by now. Um, things are moving. We're, we're shucking and jiving. We're doing a thing. Yeah. So I'm pretty stoked. I like I like the, the like where things are going. So Zoom calls are happening in terms of readings. I would talk to Zach today about trying to figure out a way to do the Zoom readings for emails where we actually have them on Zoom like we've been doing for the live streams for Patreon. Mm -hmm but charging $100 to do the actual reads with the people on Zoom so that we can ask questions about the emails when they come through. And um, I'm going to I'm going to try. My goal is to have that figured out, finalized, and on the website live by this Sunday. So by the time this airs, it should have been up for a while. So if you guys are interested in doing a Zoom call with us where we record it live, we read your email with you on Zoom so that if we have questions, we can just ask you real quick and then go back to doing what we were doing. It eliminates a lot of the what ifs. It allows you to give us new updated information and, and like to have a like an actual coaching type call. So mm -hmm. things are doing their things. <clears throat> I don't like that we don't have a third angle. I don't either, but it makes my editing so much faster. Yeah. We have to buy other cameras. We do need to buy at least two more cameras. Um, I ordered extra lights for the studio. Realistically, I can bring one of those cameras home. It's not hard to move a camera. But if you take, forget it though. Right, but I, I did forget it. But I, we have four cameras at the studio and these two here, if we picked up two more... Mm -hmm. These would probably end up going to the studio and I'd still have to bring some home. You know what I mean? Why? Because I don't want to just leave the cameras here. If we have seven cameras, I'd like to set them up and utilize all of them. You know what I mean? Like when we did your woman segment, um, which actually goes live tonight at, at 7 p.m. I'm nervous about that. <clears throat> I think it's going to do very, very well. The people who have already screened it because I sent it to Caitlin and Javier and mm -hmm. I sent it to Zach and Jenny. They both watched it. Jenny loved it. She was like, this is so yeah. refreshing. It was so fun. Like because it's you and your element mm -hmm. just hanging out with your friends having a good conversation it, it was good it okay. was good to edit too so mm -hmm. but she really loved that that high angle camera i had to stop doing it like i did the cut a couple times and then deleted both of those files because you were on a mount that was attached to the top of the frame of the camera and she was on a magic arm mm -hmm. so she her camera angle was lower than yours was and as i was editing i noticed that and i was like well i don't like this so I just deleted the rest of the files, but I bought another magic arm. So now I can set all that up. It'll stay in the same position and just snap the camera in and go. Okay. And I bought cages for all the cameras. So that works. We're doing a thing. Yeah. I, I'm making your, your shit a full on <laughs> studio production. I to be better studios. Fancy. Yeah. Yeah. I would never tell by your blanket over the shoulders like a, like a duchess. <laughs> 
I don't want my arms restricted by a cardigan or something. Ah. So I also wore this dress because you like it. I want you to be able to see it. I love that dress. I know you do. So did the DoorDash driver today. <clears throat> yes, he was a little excessive about it. It made me slightly uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. That's why I was walking outside when you were walking in. I was like, <laughs> they'll be like, excuse me, bro. What? <laughs> I could see it on your face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you would never just approach with aggression, but you're ready with aggression. And I like that. That aggression is always on the surface. Yeah. It it took a lot of work to like not be that way all the time. And it still comes out. I mean, I hear, hear about it all the time. People are like, why are you such an asshole? Like, you're so aggressive. Oh my God, you're so aggressive. <laughs> I hear it on TikTok constantly. I'm like, this yeah. isn't aggressive. You should see me when I get angry. This is nothing. People don't know what passion is. Yeah. Yeah. People, oh, you're passive aggressive. You're microaggressions. No, you're just a puss. And you've never really had anyone try to kill you in life, and it shows. It's crazy how that changes your perspective on fucking everything. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So let's do some email stuff. <clears throat> I don't know what we're doing. I, I want to go to the Harley dealership today, so. I'm very excited about having motorcycles. Yeah? Yeah. Why is that? I've always wanted one. Even as a child, my grandfather had motorcycles, so I just thought it was the most baddest thing. Like, okay, bad bitch over here. Um, when I was, like, like, young, young, he used to take me on motorcycle ride, and just the feeling of the wind, that's as close as I'm going to get to flying without being in a plane. I mean, you could go, you could always go skydiving. Okay. There are people in our life that will absolutely skydive with you. Okay. I'll I go won't. skydiving. I will totally watch you fall out of an airplane. Yeah. And tumble until your chute opens, but I am not doing that. I will have a fucking heart attack. Getting yeah. There. yeah. The anxiety mm-hmm. of, of the thought of doing that makes my heart go pump, 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 pump. I'm good. I can feel it. I love that shit. Going to Hello Scream this Saturday. <clears throat> I'm pumped up. Today's technically Thursday, but Thursday doesn't exist this week for me. So for the next 48 hours, it's Friday. So I only have one day to go to Hollow Scream. <laughs> Why does Thursday not exist for you this week? Because it feels like Friday. Okay. And... Two days till Saturday sounds so much more blase than, oh my God, it's tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just making up your own cal- calendar. Yes. T- time is, is a construct and you're in control of it. Is that what you're saying? In my life, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm fully aware that other people are recognizing today as Thursday. So tonight is just going to be a nap. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> mm-hmm. I want to read that email that came in today. I very rarely okay. ever go through that folder, but I was... Using the restroom, and I saw that email come through. Okay. And I saw something in it, and was like, "Excuse me." So I have it pulled up. It was right there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I starred that motherfucker because I, I, I was, yeah, I almost started yelling across the house over that. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm admit it. I'm also kind of having like a Sons of Anarchy moment. Now we're gonna get motorcycles. <laughs> that is not the reason to buy motorcycles. I know that. It's just a fun thought for me. Get on this bike and be like, yeah, fuck you, Clay. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to run this club. (laughs) Oh, man, the shit we see on television. (laughs) I have fun in my life. I'm glad. That's all that matters, babe. There are times I get in my car and close the door. I'm like, yeah, family. What? From Need for Speed or whatever. Fast and Furious. Oh. (laughs) His whole thing was family. Okay. Okay. I feel like my marriage is on the verge of divorce. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. And now I'm. Well, with what okay. I read in that email, what I saw, I believe it. All right. Hi, beautiful lady. I just want to start off saying how much I appreciate watching you and your husband's TikToks and podcasts. But unfortunately, I don't know where else to turn. I was so taken aback by that because it's usually Chris and Peaches. Hi, guys. No, you don't. Sidekick. Host, sidekick. It made me uncomfortable. And call me short round from now on. What? Indiana, never mind. I've never seen the Indiana Jones franchise. I've actually never watched Fast and Furious either. All the knowledge I have from that is through memes. I actually saw that in the theater. 
Need for or Fast and Furious or the first one, yeah. Indiana Jones. And it, it was funny because when we left the theater that night, all the kids that lived in that area that drove themselves were all like speed racing out of the parking lot. <laughs> Peeling out and shit. Yeah, it's so <laughs> stupid. There is a a not give a fuck that comes with being a teenager. That is like like shit like that, like peeling out of parking lots and shit. I look back on memories like that. I'm like, oh, that was fun. Yeah. Now I'm like, no, it's too loud. There are people living nearby. Yeah, it's all fun and games until you're sideways on a three lane road. I um uh, I had an ex boyfriend. We were this was when I was living in Georgia, and the wind the wind the roads were super windy, and he was like, watch this as we were on one of those winding roads, and pulled his e brake as we were going like fifty. Yeah, I thought he was going to flip that car. We had moments as a child where we would eat break around corners and shit. Yeah. Before I knew what drifting was. Mm -hmm. Yep, that was very much a thing. The extent of my racing knowledge is... (laughs) uh, So in the movie Cars, one of the older Doc, his name is Doc, he was like, if you want to drift left, turn your wheels right. And like, I know it works in the movie because they're kind of like, hey, sliding, but I can't do that with my actual car. I, uh, <laughs> you would flip your Jeep. Probably. What? It's crazy to me how much of your life revolves around television and movies and the things that you, sh- the shit you say and how little actual movies and TV knowledge you have, because a lot of it comes from like memes and shit. Yes. Well, I've actually seen cars religiously. Right. Because of the kids. <laughs> but. <clears throat> um. It's also movies that I watched growing up. Uh, my mom wasn't really into mainstream shit. Like I never watched The Matrix as a kid. Watched What About Bob? We're sailing! <laughs> 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 yeah. Like a lot of Bill Murray movies, Will Ferrell movies growing Ugh, up. Fucking hate Will Ferrell so much. Yeah. Jim Carrey was a big staple. But you've never seen Ace Ventura. Correct. So, like, that was his debut. Like, was that was it? his movie debut. He did In Living Color as the TV show. He's Fire Marshal Bill. Yeah. He was the the uh, workout girl. Mm. Um, he was a comedian in that aspect. But his first breakout movie was Ace Ventura. Mm. I can't believe you've never seen that. Well, I watch and things I, like... I make so many jokes about that shit all the time. And you've never been like, maybe I should just watch this to get the jokes. Well, now I have the wig and the shirt. So we need to... <laughs> I watch things like the Truman Show. You should sit down to play poker in that wig and that shirt tomorrow night. Okay. How fucking funny would that be? I'm going to have to do one of my famous wardrobe changes. Hope gets a kick out of those. What do you mean <laughs> when you get up and go change your clothes while they're on break? Uh, no, like I'll just I'll stop playing a hand like I folded or whatever. And it's a deliberation with the rest of the table. So I'll disappear and come back with sunglasses and my blanket hoodie. And <laughs> <clears throat> That's funny. It'll be very inconspicuous because that happens often. Yeah. So if I disappear and come back as Ace Ventura. We'd have to watch that. Maybe we should do that next week so you can watch it. That way you have some sort of movie references. And we should watch it tonight. We have poker tonight. Oh, we'll we watch it afterwards tonight. depending on when the game ends. I'll stay up late tonight. I also need to start working on my Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah. for Halloween. Yep. All right, let's do the email. My husband and I met when we were both in committed relationships. Never started dating until maybe two years later when we were both single. Myself for a year, him for three to four months. Our relationship started really well as it started in the beginning of the COVID pandemic. Oh, can I say that? You can. Okay. My mind went to, can I legally say that? You can. I mean, that's what they call it. Right. The plandemic, I think, is more fitting, but. I just know that the word itself. Yep. Can absolutely get us demonetized. Freedom of speech who? Yeah, not on the internet. Our relationship started really well as it started in the beginning of the COVID pandemic and had a few hiccups along the way, but nothing we couldn't work through. We met each other's parents, and when his mother invited us to move into her home state, we met each other's parents, and when his mother invited us to move to her home state with her, we agreed. Okay, so you guys have been together for Since two years and then decided to move to the home state? Is that what they're saying? They just recently moved? <clears throat> I don't know. We met each other. We met each other's parents, and then his mom invited us to move to her home state. Okay. So, like, was that two months after we started dating? There needs to be a... I would have appreciated an elaboration on I that. agree. 
There was a lot of stress and fighting that came from us moving, trying to create financial security and a new group of friends. Our relationship has been times... Our relationship has been times of seeming beautiful. Normally we have people go through and proofread these and put them together. We did not this time <laughs> because it just came in and I saw something in this email that I absolutely want to talk about. So you guys are going to have to bear with us on the, the errors of reading. I apologize, guys. There was a lot of stress and fighting that comes of us moving, trying to create financial security and a group of new friends. Let's pause right there because that should make you closer. Right, like the, you are the one constant in this right. foreign land we're in. Financial struggles will always stress a relationship, but when two people move to a new area, you would think that that would make them closer. Mm -hmm. It'd be like going on vacation for the first time. Like you're having to navigate new shit. This is the one person that's like, right. we're in it together, you know? You can go exploring and yeah. shit. Our relationship has been times of seeming peaceful and fighting off, on, off and on since. I've said some hurtful and hateful things when drunk and drunkenly punched him twice. Oh my God. I didn't see that. She's put his hands on him. She has put her hands on him. Yeah. Wow. Drunk. I don't give a fuck if she's drunk or not. There, That's the difference between equality and equity. You don't want equality. You want, mm. you want equity. Yeah. You, you want to be able to fucking do shit like that and get away with it. You know that for the first time in human history, domestic violence against men is higher than, than anything. I believe and that. And that's without <clears throat> the reported cases. Because women think that it's okay to put their hands on a man. Mm. Not about that life. I just listened to a case. Um, there was a woman. <clears throat> I believe she was a massive TikToker or something. She had influence. She was well known in the social media realm. Uh, she killed her boyfriend. I saw that. And there had been multiple times where he called the cops and they're like, bro, you're six foot, 300 pounds muscle. What do you mean she's abusing you? Yep. So the answer to that is, what do you want me to do, officer? Pick her up by her throat and put her through a fucking wall? Right. So where's the boundary? Are you going to do your job or do I need to, to hit her to defend myself? And then you arrest me. And then you arrest me. We know somebody who has a 189 stitch scar from collarbone to collarbone because a, a small woman tried to cut his six foot five ass mm -hmm. and didn't, she didn't just try. She succeeded. Right. She was aiming for the throat. Right. And that was the third time the cops had been out there for domestic violence. And every single time prior, they let her do her thing. And then after she cut him, she said that, that he was attacking her and that's why she did it. See, women like that are the <clears> kind <throat> I want to box. You know, a man won't hit you back. I will. Yeah. I think that. I think that people need to keep their hands to themselves. Mm. I think that any woman that ever decides to cross that line and go at a man in a physical altercation, that man has every right to put that threat down. I agree. I don't give a fuck who you are. Wielding a knife. Yep. Having a pew pew. And I'm not saying that you have to break their face, but it would be very easy to slam someone to the ground and then vacate. Oh, yeah. Spartan kick a bitch in the chest and then <laughs> run away. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, so, I have said some hurtful and hateful things when drunk and drunkenly punched him twice. What is What do they say? A, a drunk mouth speaks a sober mind? That is a saying, yes. The next sentence is an excuse as to why she hits him. I've been essayed when drunk before. So quit drinking. Stop being around people that are, that are not of quality of character. Is he the one who essayed you? Good point. Good point. But it shouldn't be an excuse for that behavior. It's not an excuse. You just made it that way. Right. My husband told me I quit drinking or the marriage is over. So I quit drinking, changed my diet and started trying to lose weight and improve myself. My husband has anger issues, ADHD. And from what your husband described, he most likely has borderline as well. Uh, don't assume that shit. You guys get tested. Mm. Don't assume that. He is on no medications for anything, has a poor diet and is constantly stressed. Poor diet's an issue. It Being is stressed issue. out sucks too, but I'm not on anything. No. I haven't been medicated in a very long time. I don't believe in that shit. I don't. I understand that it helps certain people, but I don't even believe in depression meds. Mm. The last time I was on that shit, I almost took my own life. I'm good. Yeah. I'd rather just process my shit and deal with it yeah. than fucking be numbed by something that's altering my, my thought patterns <clears throat> or the way that my chemical balances in my brain. That's a me thing. I'm not a professional. Don't do not do what I do. I'm just saying that that's how I choose to live. Yeah. I agree with that. I didn't recognize myself when I was on medication. Everybody's on medication now. Oh, I got some. Oh, I'll, I'll do that later. 
I have some fucking stats I want to show you. Okay. But we'll wait. Or maybe we'll do that in an R and R. Okay. I should probably wait and do an R and R. Currently, and for the past one and a half months, I've been staying in the guest bedroom. I chose this after a big fight and have stuck with it while we were. I chose this after a big fight and have stuck with it while we are still in a mad place. A month and a half ago? Uh, yes, I had a fight a month and a half ago. So they don't know how to communicate at all? No. Got it. He hasn't been keeping up with his personal hygiene well, making his bed, keeping the floor clean, or things that were an issue when we shared the room. Well, if you're not sleeping in there, what does it matter? Right. I don't want to share a room with those things still occurring because I don't want to fight about it. Y'all are in a roommate phase. Y'all are literally living as roommates. And you're still nagging him about shit. I want to know what the fight was because you have, you've gotten drunk and said some really nasty things and you've put your hands on this man. Yep. So just based on that, you, you have not given any examples as to what he has caused arguments or has not caused arguments. Um, whatever he has presented that could lead to an argument, that's not given as an example. Right. So based on what you have said in the email, I am assuming that this agreement was something that you were upset about, did not like the way that it was handled, and decided to go in another room. I think it's a safe assumption. Yeah. I, I totally missed the putting the hands on him thing. Yeah. Because I was just quickly scrolling. Mm -hmm. Like, because I do, I want to see how long some of the emails are. Right. That's really what I do when I open those emails. Otherwise, Zach and Jenny deal with all that shit. Putting myself in this man's shoes, I am with somebody who gets really nasty me with, with me when I'm drunk. Because she was essayed by somebody in the past while she was drunk, she beats me. Or puts her hands on me, whatever she does. I'm never good enough. I don't understand why I can't make her happy. What changed? What did I do wrong? Now she's living in another part of the house. Right. That's a lot. I feel bad for this man. People don't just slack on personal hygiene because they enjoy it. No, it's almost always linked to depression. Right. Some people are just disgusting. I'm not saying that they're not. Mm -hmm. But more often than not, it's the depression thing. Mm -hmm. It's a mental thing. So now to the main reason I'm messaging you. I got home from work yesterday in a good mood. We were both getting along. My husband was going to take a nap and I wanted to go out. So I told him I was going to the gas station. When I was getting ready to leave, I told him I was going to wear something cute so that maybe someone would try to flirt with me. This is why I sent this email through. I would lose my fucking mind if you ever said that to me. Even in a joking manner? Yeah, I would lose my shit. Who the fuck do you think you are? Yep. It gets better, though. He was with me and watched me get dressed and I left. Totally allowed it to happen. Didn't say shit about it. Just like, okay, cool. Right, because why have an argument about right. it? Right, go, go let somebody else do, do this for you since I obviously can't. My self-worth is so fucking low that you don't want me to flirt with you anymore so you're getting dressed up for somebody else. Go ahead and do your thing. Instead of getting dressed up <clears> and <throat> going out in public and say maybe someone to will a gas flirt station. with me. Right, to a gas station. How about you surprise your man when he gets home from work dressed up super sexy? Yeah, for him. For him. If you want the attention, seek the attention from your husband. It gets better. And by better, I mean worse. Right. So in what I just said, if you want that attention, seek it from your husband. If he's not giving it to you, but he was giving it to you two years ago... What changed in the relationship? And it's not just him. It takes two to tangle. If one person fucks up while dancing, the other person is going to stumble too. Yep. Can we go? Let's, let's touch on the gas station thing. You know how many videos we've made about how unsafe it is for women at nighttime at gas stations? Not even just at nighttime. When I go into a gas station, no matter what I'm wearing, I can feel men watching me. So we know that gas stations are, are typically not safe unless you live Correct. in a really good area. Right. Like super bougie. Right. So like if you live in a, a middle, lower middle class or lower income area, it's not safe. Right. Statistically, that would actually be proven. But so she's going to get dressed up to go to the gas station, hoping that somebody will flirt with her. And he just totally let it ride. I would be like, excuse me, you're going where? No, yeah. no, you're not. You need some gas. I got you. You can just stay mm -hmm. here. I'll be right back. And I don't give a fuck if that makes me controlling or not. Mm-mm. Nope. I feel like dolling yourself up to go to the gas station is like dolling yourself up to go walk through trash cans. <laughs> like, really, if somebody complimented you, does it really mean anything? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's definitely not the place you'd want to go pick up somebody. I changed my mind, decided to go to the mall for some things I needed and came home after I was done shopping. Okay. So that wasn't a, I just changed your mind. You are feeling a certain way because you were hoping to get a reaction out of your husband. Right. So instead of just going to the gas station, I'm going to go to the mall where more people can see That's me. what it was. That's what it was. It wasn't that she didn't want to go to the gas station. It's that she was actively going to try to have somebody flirt with her. Mm -hmm. So she went shopping, dressed to the nines, hoping to get attention from someone. And she told her husband she was doing it. So this presents a whole lot of other problems. But if you were like, babe, I'm going to the gas station and you were gone for two and a half hours. Could you imagine the meltdown I would be having? I would be blowing your phone up after 10 minutes because our gas station's close. Right. Um, I do not think that there would be a way to convince you that I didn't cheat on you in those no, two hours. No, there's no fucking way. Right. No way. I, I, there would be so many fucking problems in that scenario if, if I was this couple, not our life, obviously, right. but hypothetically, um, if I was this couple, mm -hmm. that that whole situation would not have flown. I, 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 don't, I wouldn't have allowed that. And you can call that controlling or... Whatever. I, I would not have allowed that shit to happen. I would have sat you down before you walked out the door and been like, all right, what's going on with the relationship that you need to go get attention from another man? Right. We need to have a real serious talk because at this point, this is not working. You're living in another bedroom. Mm -hmm. You have physically abused me. I have been holding on by a fucking thread. I'm you, obviously depressed. You've berated me. Right. So what what do I need to do now to get you to 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 get back in line as my wife? because you have not been acting like a wife for a hot minute. Yeah. And if, if that's an indication of the way that I'm leading as your husband, I need to know so that I can start making corrections and we can fall back into that role because this isn't it. And if you're like, well, I'm leaving anyways, I'm like, okay, cool. I know everything I need to know now. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's such a fucked up situation. That is not okay behavior. It's really not. Um, I'm going to hold back some... Of my opinions and just read a little bit further okay. to see if things change. It doesn't. It gets worse. Okay. When I came home, I had gotten us both Chinese. And as I was setting the food on the counter, I told him that no one tried to flirt with me. Hey, babe, I'm home. I got us food. What did you do while I was gone? After being gone for hours instead of just going to the gas station. Just before. hitting with nobody flirted with me. Yeah, it gets worse. Read the next sentence, and then we'll, okay. we'll break it down. All right. He responded saying good, and that I'm the only one who gets to flirt with you. That's normal. That's the way that should be. Right. 100%. So he obviously still has interest in his wife. Yeah. Even though she, he knew she was leaving to have the attention, to try to get attention from people, he didn't want that to be a thing. I know. That's C. I told you it gets worse. Read the next line. <laughs> I, I'm about to be real rude right now. This bitch really said I immediately got upset and told him that was rude of him to say. Yep. Yep. Ma'am, your whole demeanor is rude as fuck in yeah. existence. Yeah, this entire email is not it. The amount of disrespect you've had towards your husband, towards the marriage, just from what you said in this email, 99.9% .9 of your life is not compiled into this email. That point one percent of little creak in the window that you've given us, I'm absolutely disgusted by your mindset. If you didn't want to be with this man, you shouldn't have married this man. Right. You should not have moved out of state with him to live closer <clears throat> to his mom. You are wasting this man's time. I couldn't imagine. I could not fucking imagine being in that situation. And you know, this is I'm not saying that this is scenario is commonplace, but this behavior is commonplace in today's dating. I'm disgusted. It's why it's why marriages aren't working. It's why men don't want to be fathers anymore. It's why people aren't breeding anymore. It's one of the reasons why men are afraid to get married. Oh, there's more. Look at the face. Let's hear the, the rest. Because I stopped reading at that point. I was like, we need to read this on podcast. And I just shut it. I told him that I went out wanting to be flirted with so I could turn it down. And that I was a little disappointed it didn't happen. And that him saying it was a good that it was good, that it didn't happen, was selfish. You said that to him? Ma'am, you left your marriage, your marital home, dressed up marketing yourself, hoping that other men would flirt with you so you can shut it down. Are you, like, what? what is the starvation of attention? Yeah. Yep. There's a whole lot of fucking nope in all of this. What is self-worth? <laughs> What is self-esteem? <laughs> What's what understanding of marriage is? 
Am I doing good? Yeah, do it again. Am I winning? Do it again. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> um, what is you don't respect yourself for 500, Bob? I don't know how like, that works, but <sighs> couldn't imagine. I could not fucking imagine. He then realized that this whole time when I said I wanted to be flirted with from a stranger that I wasn't joking and became internally enraged. He should have he should have been externally enraged. He should have been externally enraged when you said that shit the first time. Right. That is not something that you even joke about. It's not. That is not a it's <clears throat> not a rational line of thinking. This is I'm infuriated and I'm not a man. Not everybody wants to fuck you. Not everybody finds you attractive. Not everybody looks at you and goes, ooh, I wish I had that. Oh, her man is so lucky. And you just expose the way your mind works on top of all of it. I am fully aware that I am not hot shit. Not to anybody but you. I was going to say, yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. And being hot shit to you is the only thing that matters to me. Yeah. I could care less about what anybody says about my appearance. I do appreciate compliments because people are saying it to some people give compliments to make somebody's day a little bit better. Right. So I appreciate the sentiment behind it. The, the wanting to spread the goodwill. I don't care to get complimented. I don't, I don't care that you think I look beautiful. I don't think, I don't care that you think my eyes are so pretty my physical appearance means absolutely nothing to me. I care about you being attracted to me. You're my husband. It's priorities. It's the way that it's supposed to be. That is the way it's supposed to be. This is a very broken woman. Oh, yeah. I'm curious as to how bad it gets. Because it got worse than I thought it was. I didn't read the part where, where she called him selfish. <laughs> how dare you? How dare you not be okay with somebody flirting with your partner? You selfish, inconsiderate man. <laughs> I get dressed for you. Yeah. I take pride in getting dolled up and getting dressed up and looking good for you. When I'm out in public and someone tries to approach me to like get my number. <laughs> do you actually do the, the I do. Rule? There was that. <laughs> I called you that one yeah, morning. You did. Gentleman gave me a compliment. Thanks. He was walking his little chihuahua. And then he stops and he asked me for an Instagram or Snapchat. And I just, that was it. He was like, oh, word. Didn't mean to be disrespectful and kept going. Yeah. Good man. I respected the hell out of that. I don't seek that out though. Yeah. I know that I am yours and I know what we have. I take pride in our relationship. You should. There is very clearly no pride in her relationship at all. She does not respect this man. She does not love this man. It sounds like there is multiple voids that need to be met. <clears throat> and she said she was single for a year. So unless you were doing some really dope, some really deep soul searching, which clearly you weren't, you would get drunk and put your hands on your husband. I'm assuming that there were quality of men that you just weren't okay with. So he became single, maybe hit you up and you were like, this is my end. And now that you have the end for the attention that you wanted, everything else is not there with him and you're growing resentful. Did all of that make sense? It, yeah, it does actually make sense. And, it, and that could be very factual. All of that's made up. That is me following threads of conclusions within my mind. Yeah. People are wild. I'm very disgusted by this. This really shows she's in dating mind in a marriage. That petty 16, 17 year old. Oh, you're not going to give me attention. I'm going to walk around the mall. Super hot. Yeah. Or post it on Instagram. Let me put, let me, let me get this fit check on Snapchat where I've got all these other men following me so I can get attention. You know, people have asked me for outfit of the day posts. Yeah. Constantly. I'm not doing that. I understand that there are people into fashion and they want to know how people put things together and what I'm not that person. Yeah. I, I don't want that attention on me. I don't want people breaking down my outfits and going, oh, well, you should wear this because it'll look so good on your figure and your curves and this, this and that. No, thank you. Are you saying that you don't want people on the Internet to sexualize you? So you don't post pictures of you and scandal, uh, scandally 
clad outfits on the internet for that to happen. Correct. Crazy how that works. Yeah. Wow. Modesty. <laughs> That's becoming a very foreign thing in America. Every time I look back down at this email, I get angry again. Oh, yeah. What happened now? <laughs> We're only 38 minutes in. We have at least another hour we can do this. So he became internally enraged. It turned into a fight. He told me that our entire relationship has changed, that the bedroom situation for now is permanent, and pretty much that I don't have any room to stand because I constantly disrespect him. I agree. Constantly disrespect him, in quotations. Yeah, I, I agree. I 100% agree. He even went so far to say the situation wouldn't have been emotionally easier to deal with if I had just cheated on him, and also said that if I ever went out again with the hopes or intentions for another man to pursue me that it would be the end of our marriage. I'm I'm shocked that it, he did uh, that he's waiting. This uh, man is giving a lot of grace. A lot of grace for this very disrespectful wife. I'm going to be honest, as a man, the moment I recognized that she was not joking about wanting other men to pursue her, that would have been it. I would have taken off the wedding ring and been like, "Look, if that's really what you want in life, you're free to do that." I'm going to pack my shit. You can take over the mortgage or whatever's going on here, and I'm going to leave. It's crazy to me that people let their relationship get to that point. Yeah. Here's another thought. Go ahead. because I. No, I just read more into this email. This man deserves so much more than what she is giving him in life. How many people do you think are in situations like that that get dressed up like that without announcing that that's what they're doing, even though that's exactly what they're doing? And then wonder why men go, who are you getting dressed up for? Because they no longer get dressed up for their man. Mm -hmm. And then women are like, oh, we always do it for him. Obviously not. Obviously fucking not. Yeah. People wonder why they, they fall out of the honeymoon phase. Yeah. And why they're in the roommate phase. Because you got you, you make it a choice. Like you, you guys stop lusting after each other. Mm -hmm. You let little things get in your way. Right. Yep. It's wild to me. It's been all this time and I can't keep my fucking hands off you. I can't like right. I, but and and I I fawn over you like you walk by me and I'm I'm still like objectifying my wife <laughs> like mm, you you know what I mean like yeah. I just don't understand how people get to the point where like they're in love with someone but not in lust with them still like that's part of being married is having that intimacy and and right. the intimacy is not always sexual but like it fucking is sexual you know somebody on TikTok said that uh we were talking about the sending the pictures to your partner and like trying to keep that, that romance alive and spicy photos. Right. Somebody was like, this podcast clearly doesn't understand body autonomy. And I was like, you guys clearly don't understand the roommate phase and people trying to stay out of that shit. So I don't know what to fucking tell you. If you think that we don't understand body autonomy, that there's not nights where you're like, I don't feel good. And I'm like, okay, cool. You're out of your fucking mind. Like that absolutely happens in every, everyone's life. So they wait. They said that because we were talking about sending photos. Yeah, because we you were like you were like you don't ever have to ask to, uh, I, you never have to ask me for photos. I just oh, yeah. send them, and I was like, yeah. But if you were in public, and I was like, yo, send me a picture. You would find a bathroom or something. Send me something raunchy just to to like build anticipation. Right. And they're they're taking it as a I own you type shit. And like people really get hung up on the verbiage of things instead of the intent behind it. And like it, it blows my fucking mind that people are like, well. I own my body and some days I'm bloated and some days I don't feel good. Blech. If your partner doesn't understand that and makes you feel like shit about that, uh, like feel like shit. Yeah. What does that say about your choice and partners? Right. If you were nasty to me when I asked you for something like that, I would never do it again. It would right. take one time to completely destroy that for me. Once is all it would take. Let me clarify being nasty. Cause saying I don't feel good is not being nasty. No, that's communicating. Right. But being like, intentionally being nasty to your person Don't because... Don't fucking touch me. Yeah. Or, you know, I'm fucking doing something right now. Why do you always got to do this when I'm out? Or whatever. Like, the, the delivery matters. Right. I, I would never ask again. <clears throat> and I got to be honest. Again. I, I got to be honest. If you did do something like that later down the road after us not having that kind of interaction, I'd be like, why'd you send me this? I, I would be super petty over that because of the way that you made me feel while I was trying to be intimate. You so, can't do that to people. So it changes the whole foundation of everything. It absolutely would. It absolutely would. Because here I am trying to like create a spark between the two of us and build anticipation throughout the day and like have dirty emails or, or text messages or whatever going back and forth so that we have that spark 
and like trying to maintain that the ember to keep our fucking our, our intimacy, our sexual intimacy alive to have that shut down in a negative manner. I would absolutely it would change everything. It would change everything. I would mm-hmm. no longer initiate ever because I would be afraid of what would happen. The rejection from the woman who's supposed to be my wife. I would never, ever, ever, ever be like, cool. You let me know when, when you're not bloated and when you feel like it's OK for me to have some of your body, because apparently that's yours and I have no right to any of it as your husband. No, I'm good. I would, that would, it would 100% destroy every bit of intimacy in our life. Mm-hmm. And it would only take one time. Yeah. People are fucked up. Back into the email. I've been asking him for dates, asking him to be more flirty, asking him for more emotional and physical intimacy. He doesn't agree that I have been making an effort to do these things for him. But if I want us to go out, if it isn't something he wants to do, we don't go. So you're saying that he doesn't agree with with you saying that you're doing these things so from his perspective you are not and from your perspective you are and you're expecting more from him and when he's telling you i also need more you're like well you're not doing it enough so it's a him problem right couldn't fucking possibly be you nope nope no way would i be taking accountability there's no way it's me i'm perfect right the next sentence says if i try to initiate intimacy he pretty much never wants to I would imagine as a man, it's very hard to get to get your soldier out of tension when you know that the woman you're supposed to love the most does not respect you, has no loyalty to you, is willing to say very nasty things to you and put their hands on you and just critique everything that you do. And even with all of that under the right circumstances, I believe it would still happen. If a man wrote this email <clears throat> in... Everyone would be fucking up in arms about this. Oh, of course. Of course. So if a man said, I've said hurtful things and hateful things when drunk and I've drunk- drunkenly punched her twice. It wouldn't even have made it onto the podcast. No. I'm disgusted. This, this actually probably yeah. would have gotten rejected. It would have, yeah. I'm glad it didn't because I'm, I'm having fun. I mean, at the expense of others, as shitty as that makes me sound, but I am enjoying myself. We haven't had a, a shitty email in a while, so this is refreshing. <laughs> This is a, um, okay, I need to stop reading ahead. I'm just going to read it. Yeah, that works. He works a pretty physically demanding job and works anywhere from 40 to 60 hours a week. Okay. I work 30 to 40 hours a week and make maybe $6 less than him. He pays the bills and I help with the bills or other things. He brings up how much he does for us and says that I don't understand the position I am in. Since he is a loyal husband that pays the bills, tries to work on his problems and doesn't physically assault me. I don't know why he had to add that part, but whatever. Because you have physically <laughs> assaulted him. <laughs> that bitch did not say, I don't know why he had to add in that part about physically assaulting me. Ooh, you're crazy. You just came out hard. Do you hear how delusional that is? But whatever. I don't know why he had to add in that part about physical assault. (laughs) Not like I would ever, but whatever girl, it was not whatever when you were drunk, putting your hands on him and he is going, why is she doing this to me? Mm -hmm. I wonder if people just don't read their emails before they send them through. Like, how did you think this was going to go? Did you think I was going to be like, yeah, girl, get your bag, do the thing. Fuck him. He's in the wrong. I would never associate with you. Yeah, I agree. I would never associate with somebody like this. I am as a couple, we would completely disassociate ourselves from somebody that that had this kind of relationship. Oh, a hundred percent. I would try to counsel the man like, bro, you're not safe. Yeah. You really need to get out of that situation. We don't condone physical violence to our partners. And maybe it's time for you to start looking for an exit strategy. But after that continued once or twice and I got to witness that shit while they were intoxicated, they would never be around us again. Let's talk about the put down of he tries to work on his problems and doesn't physically assault me. I don't know why he had to add that part, but whatever. Talk about downplaying domestic violence. Or the fact that he is actually working on his shit. I'm mad. I can see that. Your crazy came out full fledged for a second. It did, yeah. You became the female joker. Yeah. I am... That crazy is always right there on the surface. No, it too. no, it, yeah, no, yeah. it it broached the surface. It did. Yeah. Um. It it was more than just the turtle head coming out of the water. It was like the entire body 
It was almost standing on the water. I'm not sorry for it either. It was kind of fun. I, I, I am enjoying myself <laughs> for what that's worth. It's um, great not being in that position. I, I am not sorry for that because I hope I'm the fucking like catalyst for you to go, I'm in the wrong. You know, the crazy thing about all of this is somebody else that's in this position is going to hear this email, relate to it, and their life is going to change because it's not attacking them directly. Yeah. What else happened? I can't wait to hear I it. I don't know. I, I'm really not on board with the whole female assaulter when it comes to domestic. I mean, nobody should be domestically violenced against. I don't know how to say that. Abused. Abused. Domestically, domestic abused. abuse, whatever. My heart rate is fucking getting up there. We demonize men so much for domestic violence. That sentence is not long enough. He almost killed her. Dude had almost 200 stitches across his chest. Mm -hmm. She was aiming for his throat. Had that been an inch and a half to two inches taller, like higher, it would have cut his throat. Their height difference is what saved him. It really probably was. It probably was what saved him. Oh, God, I can't. I can't get past. Like, talk about double standard. If a man had written in that I drunkenly hit my woman... And then later on in the email said, well, she told me that she never physically assaults me. Don't know why she threw that in there, but whatever. I don't want to divorce. I really do love him. I am just so tired of all the fighting, the interruptions, the lack of hygiene, the lack of emotional connection, the consi- the con- constancy. Consistency. Constancy. That's she, what's written. She's not in love with him. No. She may still love him. But she's definitely not in love with him because if she was in love with him, all of these things would not be happening. Right. What a statement. I still love him, but no, you don't. You may have love for that person because of what you guys had, but you're not. There's not love there. No. Doing the things that you're doing is not a loving act. That that, I mean, that falls into the domestic abuse thing that it does. You know, I mean, men beat on women and be like, but I love you. I hit you because I love you. Right. That that shit that we've heard. Yeah. No, you're, you're not in love. You're fucking damaged. You got a whole lot of work to do on yourself. Highly recommend therapy. The constancy of all the bullshit we deal with is becoming unbearable. So I want to ask you, what are you doing to contribute to him wanting to be better in this relationship? Dressing up in the hopes that another man tries to pursue you so that you can turn him down is not the way to do that. Agreed. Would love to get his side of everything. I bet it would be defeated, shell of a man. Nothing I do is ever good enough. She's constantly critiquing me. I'm working 60 hours a week and then coming home and nothing's done in the house and she's telling me I don't do enough and that's why it's lacking. Mm -hmm. All hypotheticals and assumptions, just like I am. I'm following the threads in my mind of hypotheticals. I think a lot of that's fair, though. There's I I would be willing to put money on the accuracy of that. Yeah. I couldn't imagine us having different bedrooms for two months. I couldn't imagine us not going to bed together once. It's right. One fucking night of us going to bed at two different times and my whole night's going to be off. I can't fall asleep in the bed with if you're not in it. Yeah. That's because you fall asleep on me every night. I don't think people understand the strides that you and I take to keep the intimacy in our relationship alive. And I don't, I don't just mean physical intimacy, but like the actual, like there are structures Mm -hmm. to our days that we abide by day in and day out because we know that these things continue the intimacy that we had when we were in the honeymoon phase right? going to bed at the same time every night in the event that you're going to smoke in bed or vape vape in bed. I rub your back while you're vaping. Mm -hmm. And when you're done, I lay my arm out, you lay on me and that's how you fall asleep. And there's nights that you lay there for three hours while I watch TV. And like, even if I try to roll over and you wake up, I will hold you there until I am absolutely ready to fall asleep. And then you roll over and then I roll over. Yep. And I grab your hips and I pull you right against my body mm-hmm. and we look like a giant K because <laughs> of the way that you're you're yeah. bent. And, and that's how we sleep. But that's an intimacy. Mm-hmm. There are nights where I'm holding you 
and you're on my chest and you scoot back a little bit and we lay and face each other and laugh and giggle and, and do that shit. But that is our nightly routine. Yeah. And you will fall asleep. You, you pregame sleep is as you call it on the couch. <laughs> if do. I'm not ready to go to bed yet, or if I'm still working, yeah. then there's a lot of times where I am on my phone working, doing shit while you're sleeping on the couch, but you will not go to bed without me. And we do not neglect that cuddle time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that is important shit. I don't walk by you in the kitchen and not touch you. I make it a point to, to bite on you and like say inappropriate things and, and like fuck with you throughout the entire house throughout the day, no matter what's going on, no matter how bad my day is or how bad your day is, because we are maintaining a fire. Mm -hmm. That shit takes work. Yeah. If you don't believe me, watch alone history channel. It's fucking 10 or 11 seasons at this point. Those motherfuckers lose that fire. They tap right the fuck out because you cannot exist without that. Your marriage will fail without that. Yep. It takes constant work and effort. Mm -hmm. Blows my mind that people make the decision to just let that shit go. I mean, I, I understand that it happens. It's happened to both of us in past situations. I just, after experiencing that loss and regaining it again, I'm not, I'm good on that. People are wild. Back into the email. I find myself more and more asking myself how much I really need this marriage if I would be better being alone or just not existing at all. Wow. Well, that explains my whole lack of self-worth statement that I was going to make. Yeah. So you went from doing the fucked up shit to playing the victim all in the same email. Yes. What a turn of events. You're like a, a professional gymnast the way that we're tumbling through this motherfucker. Um, there's how, more. How, how, okay. So I, I'm assuming she didn't read her email. I don't think so. You laid all that on the line, admitted everything that you were doing and then tried to play the victim. Your life is a constant consequence of your choices. Yeah. This is full-fledged victim mentality. Like, I feel like I'm on, like, standing on the bank of a, of a lake or, like, on the dock of a lake. And I have my hand in the water and, like, I'm fucking reaching for this person. And she is so deep down in her victim mentality that she doesn't know what is up and what is down. All of that foul shit you did just to turn around and say... I don't think just, I deserve my marriage. Or I'm better off just not existing... I texted you this morning. You made a point about our milk frother. And it was just a, hey, make sure this is, thing's cleaned. And I wasn't super shitty, but I was like, I didn't do that. That's not the point of the conversation. The point of the conversation is this needs to be done. I'm making sure it's getting done. I need you on the same page that this is going to get done. And I sat there and we like we had the conversation and I was like, okay. And you were like, okay. And then an hour later I texted you. I was like, you know what? I, I should not have gotten defensive in that conversation. That should have just been an, okay, I'll make sure I clean it out. Right. And that's it. I am constantly thinking about conversations, my facial expressions, my tones, my body language. It has come more to my attention in our relationship than any other relationship in my life that. I wear a lot of my emotions on my face. And there are times where I'm like, my confusion can look like frustration or anger. I couldn't imagine not living life, dissecting my own behavioral patterns or the way that I conduct myself with people in my life. I feel like there has been no reflection on this, no reflection on any of the past behaviors, especially with that whatever statement imagine how different your reaction would have been to the milk frother conversation this morning if you would have had someone in your life to be like you're not in trouble i'm not mad at you this is just one of those things that we have to stay on top of it's basic maintenance and that would have been the end of the conversation that would have been a very different because when i brought that to you you mm -hmm. weren't in trouble i wasn't mad I'm just letting you know like I, it looked like there was still milk from yesterday or the day before in there it, it was just probably could have just been water i don't know mm -hmm. But I was just making it known so that like we don't drink bad milk. Right. But because of your past lived experiences, you did get defensive. 
And I, and like, I just let it ride. I, you weren't in trouble. I'm not mad. I don't, right. you know, there's, there was no reason for it to even be that way. And I just said, okay. And went about my day, but you mm-hmm. obviously dwelt on it and was like, all right, this is not the way I should have handled it. Yeah. And I was like, I appreciate that. I don't want us getting sick. And you're like, no, I don't either. And that was the end of it. Yeah. <clears throat> but that comes to your childhood and your lived experiences with previous men. Right. Because of the way that you've been treated in the past. And I, I don't do that. Right. I, I don't, I don't ever get mad about that shit. Like e- even things that, that do like eventually get under my skin most of the time it's like a ha ha mm-hmm. thing because this is just so peaches left the fucking window open again <laughs> that startled me a little bit because it was four o'clock in the morning and it and sounded loud. like a jungle in the bathroom but yeah. i love um, that jungle sound it echoes in there I, I, yes it does yes it fucking does um that was that was a very weird pee it's a whole different conversation but was it peaceful it, no oh no because i was not prepared to be outside in my bathroom so sorry <laughs> <laughs> But that that comes down to just parenting and like being a good partner. And because of our lived experiences, we get defensive when somebody calls us on our shit instead of going, you know what? I probably did do that. Mm. When you, I remember that time when you were like, can you rinse your plate off? And I got super defensive because I just get in a lot of trouble for that shit. Yeah. And there are times where I, and I argued the point. I was like, I don't fucking do that because of my past. There has been a time within the last two weeks where I set a plate in the sink, walked all the way around to the back of the living room. Oh my God. I didn't, and I ran back in here and, and I almost texted you, <laughs> but I didn't want to text you to get an attaboy. Right. But it, I did realize in the moment that when I am answering emails or on a phone call or trying to be quiet because I'm on a phone call, people don't need to hear me washing dishes. Mm-hmm. Like autopilot. <clears throat> I am on autopilot. I'll come back to this in a minute. And then, mm-hmm. you know, five minutes goes by and I'm on 900 other things and yeah. it just never happens. But that also comes down to my lived experiences. Mm-hmm. So, I also recognize this morning, I don't always get defensive when things are brought up. I want to clarify. Yeah, no. There are a lot of times where I'm like, oh, my bad. Yeah. Next time. And then next time. Hey, babe. Fuck. <laughs> 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 um, but this morning, I was 100% on autopilot. Like, I'm having intestinal pain. The mornings are hectic for me. The kids' bedrooms are across the house from each other. So, I'm... Getting one child in the bathroom, brushing their teeth, getting ready. I'm across the house getting the other child and I'm hearing mommy. And so I'm like, how smooth did this morning go? Really smooth. I was involved. You were very involved. Yeah. I I normally (laughs) let you do the mom thing in the mornings because that's the last little bit of time that you have with the kids before they go to school. And I try not to interrupt that too much. Mm -hmm. You were doing something with little man and she came out and she's like, where's mommy? And I'm like, is that what you're wearing in school today? And she's like, yeah, but I'm like, you look so good, but where's your socks? Mm-hmm. She went right in there and put her socks on. And then when she came out to show you, you're like, you even have your socks on. Yeah. She was so proud of herself over that. And, and the same thing when little man came out, he started to have a conversation with you. And I could tell he was still wearing his jammies. And I'm like, bro, let's get you dressed and then go have that conversation with your mom. And then like they went to go play in the room. And I'm like, if you guys are going in the room, why don't you take your shoes with you and you put your shoes on while you're watching TV and like. I tried to navigate that this morning because I know that you're not feeling well. I think it's also different when you give direction because it's, oh shit, Pops is saying something. Yeah, I hope that that's more from a respect than a fear thing. Yeah, I don't think it's a fear thing. It's a very much a, I'm a very goofy mom. Like I'll let things ride, especially if I think it's funny. (laughs) If they're doing something, they probably shouldn't be doing it, but I'm getting a good kick out of it. I'll let it ride a little bit and then I'll get serious about things. So I'm very much known to be, you'll get a warning or two when you come in, it's get your shoes on. Okay. Yeah. I want things to run smooth. I want them to learn that procrastination leads to failure Mm -hmm. and that there's a whole lot of time in the morning. If you get them up an hour before you have to leave, I don't think you actually do, but if it was an hour, they could get their breakfast, their shoes, clothes, and watch TV all at the same time and still have like 20 minutes to spare. Mm-hmm. If they just do everything in one shot versus running across the house, seeing what sister's doing, seeing what brother's doing. Where's my monster truck? Where's my shoes? I want to wear Crocs today. Can't wear Crocs today. You know that. <laughs> right, right. So like I'm trying to work on that. I'm mm-hmm. trying to do, I don't know. I, I'm trying to change my role in our house a little bit, and I think that I'm doing okay with it. But I am liking the shift. Yeah. yeah. I have noticed the change of things like the, I guess you could say I noticed the motion and the direction things are going. And yeah. I'm very, I don't want to say please because that makes me sound, I don't know. Makes me sound like I wasn't doing enough before. No, it's, it's how I feel though. Really? Yeah. I, there's, I, I want, I, I don't know. I have to be careful with the things that I say on here because there's, 
aspects of our personal life that I don't want getting into the world. Right. But there are things that I am not happy with when it comes to the structure of things. And I'm working on changing that. And if that means that I have to do more, like getting up at 645 every morning or at six, so be it. There's going to be changes happening that is going to change the course of our life over the next six months. And I want to solidify that routine Yeah. and just leave it at that. It's made my mornings a little bit better. Yeah. And I've noticed the kids are more excited. It sets a different tone for the mornings. Yeah. The things that you've been implementing. I appreciate it. I got super emotional this morning. Yeah. 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 Oh, back to what I was saying. I was on super, uh, super. I was on autopilot when I got defensive with you this morning about the milk thing. And the reason that I was dwelling on it was I, I don't usually do that. Yeah. Like, why did I do that this morning? Um, and it was because my body's in pain. I'm on autopilot. I'm trying to get the kids ready for school. I can't focus on the pain because if I focus on the pain, I'll be short with the kids and all of that just to be short with my husband. (laughs) So check yourself when you're on autopilot. Looking back, I would, I can, I like that droning noise. I know everybody experiences life differently and I, I, experience different noises in my body. Like when I'm overwhelmed and I'm panicking, there's that TV static going Mm -hmm. on. When I'm on autopilot, it's that droning noise. Like you're in an airplane and looking back on that conversation, that was fucking full volume. So back into the email, I know it's wrong to want someone to flirt with you, but it's also wrong that your marriage has gotten to a point where you feel so desperate to feel pretty Or wanted that you put on a slightly skimpy top in hopes to cheer up a little. So you really don't have any self-worth at all. You you rely solely on the validation of other people. On your appearance. uh, And on your appearance of all fucking things, which means you're shallow as fuck. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you have the conversation with your husband before it got to that point? Why didn't you guys start making changes in your life before it got to that point? Why didn't you find something of sustenance? To give you an internal gratification that's not based solely on your body. Right. Wild. People are fucking wild. The saddest part of it being that no one even tried to flirt with me. I would say the saddest part of all of that is that you thought this was okay. Yeah. And you thought that your husband would give you... A high five. When we were on the patio talking about it... He told me it was pretty sad that one, I got dressed up to go fishing for attention and two, it didn't even work. I agree with that. Yeah. It is sad that you did that. It, yeah. I view that as, um, I just happen to look down and glance the next sentence. I'm going to continue saying what I'm saying. I, I view that as pathetic. Yeah. It is melancholy is not the right word. Desperation. Desperation is definitely the right word. There's a desperation in that. There is, I don't know, just that whole mindset's giving me 7-Eleven bathroom sticky feel. Right, like that, I don't, I'm going to go use the bathroom somewhere else. It's a, I guess a sanitary is the word I'm looking for. I don't feel clean with that mindset. It makes me feel dirty. It makes me feel, I don't know. What if somebody did flirt with you and then they gave you their phone number? Right. And now you're having this whole secret relationship he's just a friend though yeah that could have happened it could have before you move on i feel the need to say that if you are a male or a female and your entire existence is predicated based off of your looks and you believe that that is the only value that you bring to the world you are fucked as a human being you are you need therapy yeah there is There's a shallowness to that. There's damage to that. That tells me that you are never appreciated as a human being. There's a whole lot of damage there. A whole lot of damage. And and what's going to happen when you get old and your body starts failing you? You're not going to have anything of sustenance to offer anyone or yourself for that matter, because then you're really going to hate yourself because your looks have gone. Right. Wild. You know, I keep coming across articles of women in their mid 40s and early 50s. Um, commenting on the fact that they were super bitchy young women and they're like, now I don't even have my looks for me. Yeah, because that's what happens. Yeah. Time catches up to everyone. And you will never be as young as you are again as you are today. Back into the email. I feel so ugly and alone. 
I feel like I'm not pretty and pathetic. I wanted someone to think I was pretty and that I really mustn't be. Well, you shouldn't predicate your life on, on looks then. Because yeah. you're you're ugly on the inside. And it's clear because of the way that you're treating your husband. Yeah. Not your boyfriend, your husband. Which is a whole other level of disrespect. Right. The only things you've included in here about your husband is that he has poor hygiene. He's not cleaning up after himself. He's working 40 to 60 hours a week. Sounds like he's depressed. You have said that you have drunkenly put your hands on him, that you have berated him and said some very hateful things to him. You can take a nail out of a wood post. You're not going to patch up that wood post. How many holes have you put into your husband? And that whole sentence of, I wanted someone to think I was pretty and that I really mustn't be, tells me everything about what you think when you look in the mirror of yourself. You know that her husband at one point obviously felt she was attractive. Yeah. <clears throat> Once the ugliness starts to bleed from the inside, you are no longer beautiful on the outside. Yeah. It doesn't take much for that, that illusion of, of beauty to be destroyed. Yeah. Could you imagine how different the scenario would have been if she would have gotten dressed up for him? Right. Cooked a dinner maybe, had dinner on the table, and then flirted, made eye contact, footsied under the table, like mm -hmm. something. You could have had a very different interaction had you given that attention to your husband. Not your boyfriend. Mm. Your husband. Instead, you went seeking it from strangers because your relationship's fucked up and you would rather give that attention to the outside world than the attention necessary to fix your marriage. So did things, was there a turning point where things went bad? Has this been your relationship the whole time? That's a good question. I scroll back up to the top. I was like, what's the catalyst? And the only thing I see is that there was a lot of stress and fighting that came with us moving, trying to create financial security and a new group of friends. Oh, but you know, when you said that, though, I was like, you would think that that's the time that things are at their best. Right. So this had to have been something that's been a constant issue mm -hmm. because that is when you're at your best. When we go on vacation, we're closer than we are otherwise oh, yeah. because we're inseparable. Like. I'm pooping with the door open so that I can make <laughs> eye contact and talk to you in the hotel room. Like we are that close while we're on vacation yeah. because we're in a new environment. There's so much to talk about. Right. Right. Our days are new and exciting. And like, what do you want to do today? I don't know. What do you want to do today? Let's go yeah. play, play poker. Let's go to the Valley of Fire. Let's go. You know what I mean? Like, let's go swimming. Let's do something. We don't have to work. And I understand that they weren't on vacation but that new atmosphere and how do we find our way around and maybe we need to start finding jobs and like, right. Like how do we figure this out together? Right. And we have to have new friend circles now. So we need to make sure that we're a unified front finding our friends so that we can find quality people. Like there's a whole lot of like teamwork that should be happening in that type of change. Yeah. And it wasn't. No, there was a division there and that division is a choice. Why would you move to a new area with somebody if you're not like if, sold on the relationship. Right. Right. If things aren't on the up and up. Yeah. There are so many words here yet. Nothing is really said besides what kind of person she is. I'm just like, there are some things that people say where I'm hearing it and I'm like, there is absolutely nothing I can tell you to get it through your skull. That's going to change your perspective on things. Right. And I feel like shit in these moments. All I'm doing is confirming you think that you're pathetic in this. I agree. This is very pathetic behavior. Right. I would be ashamed of this <clears throat> behavior. But acting like that and that behavior being the case does not make somebody. You are not the behavior. That's right. the actions of who you are. Mm -hmm. Behaviors can be changed. So hopefully hearing us read this and verifying the way that you're feeling about yourself makes you go, you know what? They're right. I have been a really shitty person and I need to fix this. And maybe you go to your husband and be like, I sent an email to the To Be Better podcast. And they read it live and they ripped me apart because of everything that was going on. And it made me realize that I was in the fucking wrong and I want to be a better wife. And then they start the check ins. And maybe this is the catalyst that makes her become a better person. This 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 situation could ultimately change her life. I hope so. Or it could make her more depressed and, and, and just solidify that this is who she is and she has no desire to change. Yeah. But I don't believe that you would send an email like this if you think that this is just great behavior and that you weren't looking for some sort of feedback, especially to us, because we attack things like this. Mm -hmm. 
I'm never going to condone this type of behavior. No, this is, um, I would say all of this to my daughter. Yeah. Our daughter. If, if she came to me and was like, mom, this, this, and this is happening, and this is what I did, and this is how I reacted, that is not how I fucking raised you. That yeah. is not how we as a family unit function. I don't know who the fuck you think you are or where you got that. Either we're going to find ways to change that behavior or I'm not going to sit here and argue with you about it. It has been a hard year for me since my dad died in February. I haven't been dealing with the emotions of that until the last couple of months. My husband and I didn't have a ceremony so we could save money and plan to do a five-year wedding, but my dad is dead now. He will never be able to be a part of that or any future family kids. I may not be fertile enough to have either. I don't understand why that was even remotely put into this email. I was just thinking, what does that have to do with you dressing up to bide for attention from other men or uh, yeah, all of the other, you not sleeping in the same room for almost two months? I'm about to be a real fuck face. Okay. How do you think your dad would feel if he saw you doing that? Because as a father, if my daughter was treating a man the way that you're treating your husband and acting the way that you're acting, I would, I would be very disappointed as a father. I would yeah. be like, how the fuck did I fail you? Did you ever see your mother doing this to me? Did we like do in, improper things in the home that makes you think that this behavior is okay? Mm -hmm. Because this is not okay. You're supposed to honor your partner. Right. Tell me where you're honoring your partner. Show me where there is love in your marriage because this ain't it. I don't give a fuck how mean that is. Mm -hmm. If you were that upset over your dad and the fact that he can't be a part of your wedding and you want to honor him, then honor your father by being a good wife to your husband. Yeah. It, would your father want to be a part of the wedding knowing you felt this way and all of these things were going on? This is, I, I wonder, well, yeah, I don't know. That would be pure speculation, but right. I, I can tell you that as a father, if my daughter acted like that, I'd be very disappointed. Yeah. I would be disappointed in my son if he allowed that shit to happen too. Yeah, that would be a, I can't watch you go through this. Yep. So I can be a revenue for you to get away. You can come and I'm sure pops will be okay with you staying at the house until you get your shit together because you are a fucking human being and no one is going to treat our son that way. Yeah. Oh man, everyone jokes about the father with the... The pew pew sitting on a porch with his waiting for his daughter to get home from dates. Don't fuck with boy moms. <laughs> yeah. I have seen what this world does to men. And I know that. Oh, man, I'm going to start crying. I know that our son is going to have to face hardships in his life. And he's going to have to overcome things. I don't think it's going to have to be as bad as you think it is, though. I pray for that. Over my dead body, though, will another woman put her hands on him degrade him, belittle him, make him feel like he's not worth anything. Those things are going to happen regardless, though. I know. Not from his wife, though. No. Well, it'll happen from total strangers. I mean, yeah. it, it, that that's normal things. But see, this all also comes down to the way that we talk to our kids. Right. There's no, you're stupid. There's no, are you stupid? Mm -hmm. We don't do that. So if they don't understand something, we're like, what don't you understand so I can help you understand it? Mm -hmm. There's no belittling Name calling. Oh, man. Um, I know you fell asleep early on yesterday. I went I down the rabbit hole of Mark Driscoll on mm -hmm. fucking YouTube. And I watched a thing where he was talking about giving dominion over things. Because when God gave Adam the permission to name the animals, he was giving him dominion over the animals. And when you name something, you have a control over it. So when you give names to your children, the power of those words uh, afflict, uh, afflict um, affect your children, whether you mean it to or not. Mm -hmm. So saying things like, come on, little man, you got this versus what are you stupid? Those are name calling. You may be doing it as a passive statement, but what your kid hears is I'm stupid. Mom or dad thinks I'm stupid. And that's not how you handle things. So when you say something like, well, what don't you understand? So I can help you understand it. That is a place of compassion. You are now trying to, um, help versus correct mm -hmm. or you know what I mean? Like you're complimenting the situation by being a part of it. You're not destroying the situation. Right. I, I think it's important that we always, I mean, we, we always do this anyways, but it's very important that as our kids grow, we give those positive 
words and that positive communication. So when the world is ugly to him or her, they're not going to have that already beat down. Internalized self-hatred. Right. They're going to feel like, well, wait a minute. Why do you feel that way? I'm a good person or I'm not stupid. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Instead of having people that they love and respect go, you'll never be anything. What are you fucking dumb? Like, are you stupid? Like, cause I heard a lot of that shit growing up. Our kids aren't going to hear that. I'm never going to talk to them like that. Even if they don't understand it and I get frustrated, I walk away and come back calm if that's what it takes, but we're not doing that. So I don't think our, I don't think our kids are going to have that. I don't think that it's going to be as bad as you think it is. I think there's going to be enough, um, Mm self-respect. I am enough that when the world shits on them, they're gonna be like, I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. I'm awesome. I hope so. Cause every morning we do affirmations before they walk into class. The kids are cruel and I know that kids are cruel and the only thing that we can do is prepare them the best that we can Mm -hmm. to make sure that as these things come that it happens. And then when those things do happen, hopefully we have a relationship good enough with our kids that when they come home and talk about it, we can explain that shit. Like, you know, when you, when you're an adult, things like this don't happen. This is just because kids are mean and this is probably how their parents talk to them. You should feel sorry for these kids, not yourself. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, these conversations happen and they should happen. It's just going to, it's, I don't, I just don't think it's going to be as bad as, as we originally thought it was going to be. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm optimistic. I don't know what to do anymore. I hope this was enough important information for you and your husband to help, or maybe include in your podcast so I can watch a video and send it to my husband too. Oh, you should definitely send this to your husband. I appreciate any response. Uh, So show this to your husband, then have your husband email us. Because I would love to hear his side of things. Yeah. And then I want you both to sit down and write an email together and do a third email as a follow up so that we can see where your life is going. Because as of right now, what you guys are doing isn't working. You see that you, you, the title of the email is I think my marriage is headed towards divorce. You fucking know that you're in the wrong. He could be in the wrong, too. He could be doing a whole lot of foul shit, but we don't know that because that wasn't included. Right. But what you're doing is definitely not it. Yeah, from the way that this email was composed, it sounds like this is a man who lacks support in his home, lacks support in his marriage, is waking up to go to work, to come home, to go to bed, to wake up and go to work. This is very me, me, me and selfish. You're saying you're initiating intimacy or you're trying to initiate something and he turns you down or he says he doesn't want to, whatever it is. I'm really hung up on that because you can't spit viper at a man and expect him to be attracted to you. Right. Well, she is trying to do exactly those things. She's just trying to do it with people other than her husband. Right. According to the email. Nothing in that email said that she was trying to maintain intimacy or... Well, she said that she's tried to initiate and he never wants to. Depends on how she's initiating. Because like I said, in that scenario, it doesn't matter how beat down a man is. You try hard enough and you try in the right way, things are going to happen. It may not be very fun. It could be a pure anger grudge fucking, but it, it could still happen. There's definitely a, a, a mental tie to sex for both men and women. And though that mental tie is a, is in a lot different for men than it is for women, there still has to be an emotional attachment there to an extent. Um, and sometimes that, that emotional attachment could be anger or hatred, unfortunately. I would like to do one more email just to finish with like a thank you or something positive because I don't want to end this with a that email 100% would have been rejected. Yeah, I'm frustrated right now. It was fun for me. I'm not in that situation. (laughs) My life is dope as shit. I hate to say this because it sounds really fucked up, but when I hear things like that, I'm like, yes, I'm doing things right. I don't live like that. Uh, It it makes me angry to think that. I'm just, I'm really hung up on the, I don't know why he said that, but whatever. He said that because you put your hands on him. He said that because you've been physically abusive towards him. He also could have said that because somebody in her past probably didn't tolerate the shit that, that he's tolerating and, and may put have put their his hands, hands on her. Right. I think that that's a very likely scenario. Especially if she acted like this with another dude. Yeah. Did you find a thank you? Um, I found a. A feel good. Okay. This is titled Learning to be Accountable. I'm still hung up on that last email. She started it with calling me beautiful. And after getting through that email and knowing that that's how she is okay with living her life. I don't want that compliment. You want me to get you a wet wipe so you can clean yourself off? 
No. Do you feel dirty? A little bit. It feels like a manipulation tactic. Like you're trying to give me a compliment to lift my spirits up a little bit before we get into all the bullshit that you've done in your life. But because you were nice to me, I can't get that angry at you. Not saying that that was that emailer's attention. That's how it comes across to me. That's how you take it, yeah. Yeah. Let me butter you up before like good old boy shit. Hi, Chris and Peaches. I have fully taken time to think about sending in an email because I'm most, mostly embarrassed to be one of those people that would express my concern but not take accountability for my actions. Okay. What a difference. <laughs> I'm willing to bet that their life is a whole lot different too. It's what crazy a how difference. that works. I think I have gotten to the point where I'm realizing my faults and igniting the change within myself to be better for me and my family. Love that. I love y'all's YouTube channel so much that it is always on in the background rather than music now as I am cleaning, cooking, driving, and whatnot. Pause. Speaking of YouTube, if you haven't yet, like the video, share the content, send it to people that you think might benefit from it. If you would like to see us to continue doing what we're doing, the best way to support us is by getting the content to as much people as possible. So do that. And in the event that you want even more content because she's only watching on YouTube, check out the Patreon channel. If you haven't checked out the Patreon channel yet, Peaches has a segment on there that is women only called The Garden that drops this Thursday night, which will be today, October 5th. <laughs> Fuck, today is Thursday. Isn't today Nicole's birthday? It is. I've already did the happy birthday thing. I didn't. I have to. Okay. Uh, happy birthday, Nicole, even though you don't watch her podcast. <laughs> um, today's actually my unlucky day, believe it or not. I know. Yeah. Yep. Um, so with that being said, check out the Patreon channel, too, if you want exclusive Peaches content. Also... If you are in the state of Florida and you would like to be on the podcast or on the Peaches segment, send an email to interview at to be better .com and tell us why you want to be on the show because we are looking to fill spaces. Yep. Whether it's for an R and R or her garden segment. I'm excited to see what you've got going. That first the first interview that you did that goes live tonight was wholesome as fuck. Yeah. It was such a good conversation. You and Caitlin in a room together medicated and just talking she's one of my favorite people you guys your your energy matched yeah like she's a slightly different version of you i would say she is <clears throat> a softer version of me you say something she's like i love that yeah like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I the mannerisms like, are very similar i feel like we're both at a tea party in elegant dresses but somehow i have dirt on me <laughs> <laughs> that's funny Sorry about the shameless plug. Go ahead. <laughs> I am not. There is no shame when I plug our shit. I went to the yeah. Discord this morning. I was like, hey, guys, my morning's going a little less shitty. Thanks to Doobie Better Brew. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, I forgot. We have coffee. If you guys haven't yet, tobebetterbrew.com. We have our own brand of coffee. We do. And it's actually really good. I had the pecan pie today. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm really liking the French roast so yeah. far. Yeah. I gave Sean a bag of the um, Guatemalan roast. Okay. So, and then I'm thinking I'm going to take the Ethiopian blend to Steve. Yeah. Because he likes the exotic blends or whatever. I got a, I got, I got one that's finished in a whiskey barrel. I saw that. Yep. I was thinking about opening them all yesterday and smelling them, and I was like, no, I don't think I can do that. Yeah, I'd rather you not. I'm so glad I didn't, specifically because I didn't want it to be. Yeah. Why would you do this? <laughs> I, I'm really weird about my coffee beans. I want them as fresh as I can get them. And yeah. ironically enough, our coffee is sent out the day it's roasted. It is. So it's fresh, fresh, fresh. All right. Back to the email. <laughs> my kids seem over it, meaning listening to us everywhere they go. <laughs> yeah. Either way, they have headphones or they're in their own rooms that they are just over it. So let my story begin. I am 38 and my husband is 37. I work at the corner of Happy and Healthy. Editors note, I believe this is a Walgreens slogan. Oh, okay. As a retail pharmacy technician, and he is a police officer that loves the adrenaline of dog watch. We have six kids together. Holy shit. Ages 18, 17, 12, times two, they are twins, a 10-year-old and an 8-year-old, with a very hard-to-deal-with ex-wife. Oh, man. Oh, man, like six kids belong with, like... Biologically, to I, the ex -wife I would or? imagine this is a blended family, probably okay. some her, some his. Okay. My husband has it easy as my daughter's biological father has been incarcerated since she was 10 months old. She is now 18. And my son's father just pays child support and lives his life, the 17 year old, which is perfectly fine with me. 
Okay, so the two oldest are her children. Mm-hmm. My husband has an ex-wife that seems to like to cause drama on a daily basis, but that's another story for another time. My husband and I met on Plenty of Fish at a time in both of our lives when we were at our lowest and finding who we were in a sense. So they actually met on a dating website. Uh, yes. Plenty of Fish, though, I believe is a Christian dating website. Christian dating, date, chat is plenty. Uh in other words, there are plenty of Christian people in our sea. Plenty of fish is dedicated to pairing like-minded individuals together, which is why we've bet. Uh, I mean, I guess maybe there is. That's the first I've ever heard of that. I know that my cousin was on that site a long, long time ago. Yeah. Wild. We both were not looking for a relationship just for <clears throat> someone to vent to as I was a single mother and he was going through a divorce. I don't believe that. I don't believe that either. You don't get on a dating website to find someone to vent with. I agree. You go to a therapist. Yep. Or you talk to your friends. Or you go to a bar. Yeah. <laughs> don't do not do that. No, don't do that. It's, it's just funny because the, the, the whole bartender thing. Tell me about your woes. And he's cleaning <laughs> a glass. The same glass for an hour. Glass is fucking spotless and he's still just cleaning it. I don't think that one ever gets used. It's just a prop. Yeah, it is. Just to make it look like he's doing something. I had been in a 10-year relationship that wasn't the greatest at all. We were constantly off and on and we cheated a lot. Having another to talk to at the time during the day just eventually turned into a relationship that we thought we were ready for. To be honest, we didn't date very long before he moved in with me. So we met in April of 2013. His divorce was finalized in May of 2013. He moved in June or July of 2013. And we were married in February of 2014 because he couldn't have his kids on overnight visits unless we were married and his ex made sure it was known that it was in the divorce decree. I don't like that. You got married just so that he can have his kids over? Right. I just feel like shit like that just cheapens marriage so much. I agree. You also don't know who you're getting married to. You're doing it just for the... I feel like that's a green card marriage. Like I'm doing this because there's a benefit from it, not because I'm actually in love with this person. It, was, it, it was a year into their marriage, a little over a year, right? We met in April of 2013. He moved in June or July of 2013, and they got married in February of 2014. So it wasn't even a year. No. Nope. No. Okay. I misread that. I thought they got married in June or July. So they had at least a year in relationship before they had less they got than years, 10 months. 10 months. Better than two months. Yeah, you're right. We had been talking about marriage, so we just went ahead and got married at a courthouse on February 20th, 2014, with all six of our kids and a handful of family members. I just really hope that y'all got married because that's what you wanted and not because the kids needed to be, spend the night there. Or just because you guys were talking about it. Not too long after, we got pregnant and had our son on January 14th, 2015. So yes, that's right. Met 2013, married in 2014, and baby number six in 2015. Back then, we didn't know that it took more than just playing house to actually succeed at a marriage. Well, yes, very clearly that's how people view marriage because that's what marriage is nowadays. That's why people don't want to get married. Right. Because you can live together and have that versus actually and being married. Play house. But and I think the problem with that, too, is when you take the, the religion out of marriage. It What is it? What is it? Mm -hmm. Like, if you're already doing all of those things, why get married? So you can take half my shit. Tax break. Yeah. Car insurance will be cheaper. We heard that. Not on an email. Like, in actual life, somebody said, yeah, my, my man says we should get married just so we can have the tax break. Yep. That would devastate me. Yeah. We know that she's going to get that all of this is leading to better times because of the emails. It feel good. Yes. Okay. He finished school to become a police officer at the end of 2015 while working full time being a security officer while I did home health and took care of the house and kids. He ended up cheating on me sometime in November of 2015 through February of 2016 when I found out. I was absolutely devastated and it took it as a lesson learned for both of us. We chose to stick it out and make things work, and that is when the work really should have started, but it didn't. Ooh. I started to become depressed and withdrawn from him and threw myself into finishing college and taking care of all of six taking care of all six of our kids to the best of my ability. I ignored him completely because I was so hurt from cheating. From him cheating. 
That's an expected reaction. Yeah, it is. But here's a deeper thought. She said earlier in the email that in both of their previous marriages, they were cheaters. Right. So she has cheated on somebody. Um, and so has he before this. Well, I don't know if it was he who was cheating or her and the person she was with were cheating on each other. But she has been a cheater. What was the point in bringing that up for you? Because they've both done it in the past. Mm -hmm. Like, as somebody who has been cheated on and somebody who has cheated, there is a different level of understanding of, of an accountability there. Mm -hmm. Because I have been on both ends of that. I have been cheated on when I was doing absolutely nothing wrong, and I have cheated. So in that scenario, like, I know that cheaters can not be cheaters, and I know that they can continue to be cheaters. Mm -hmm. But I also know that there's an accountability that comes into things. And, like, normally... You can see things start to decline before that cheating happens. And a lot of that falls into the roommate phase because you're in the roommate phase and, and like things are not happy and, and loving the way that they used to be or lusting. Mm -hmm. So like, I, I don't know what caused this, but I'm willing to bet if they were to look at what was going on in the relationship, either he is a habitual cheater mm -hmm. or something wasn't right. Right. And being that she was once a cheater, she should be able to look for these things. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That wasn't a dig at her or a dig at him. It was just an observation. An observation. Fast forward to now and we are finally learning how to communicate the way we should have been all along. I have been in therapy for close to two years now and I found y'all's podcast through TikTok and I was addicted. Uh-oh. I think more so because I was on my healing journey and still am and just needed a more realistic approach. Love that. We hear that a lot. Yeah, we don't kitty gloves it. Yeah. Yeah, the chick that we interviewed that's a therapist in Orlando said the reason that we have the success rate that we have is because we are telling stories that are very similar to other people's stories and they can hear it without being attacked. Right. And that creates a change. Because the nobody details wants, are changed. Yeah, nobody wants to be attacked. Mm -hmm. But when it's very similar, you can be like, oh, I relate to that. And then you can make changes. Because it's you making a decision versus somebody else telling you what to do. Crazy good. <laughs> Back into the email. Of course, I have my days where I'm like, nope, I can't listen to this today because it just hits too close to home. and I am just not ready for that. There it is. I do ask myself, why is this episode so hard to listen to? <clears throat> what about this is triggering to me and why? I love that she's asking herself that. We hear that too all the time. Mm -hmm. I just had a whole train of thought in my brain. Holy shit. <laughs> I feel like my body just ran like the flash and now my physical being is just catching up and I'm like why was I so triggered last email it's because there is a a self-righteousness like an air of being on a high horse in that last email and I very much Feel like I am that person of why do you think you're better than everybody? Why is this just revolving around you? I don't think martyr is the right word. I feel like there's a wrong in the universe happening. And that wrong can be righted so easily. And the fact that it's out of my control is frustrating for me. Knowing that the actions are dependent upon another person. And if that person is not willing or able to recognize the cause and effect of what they do in other people's lives, it's more frustrating for me. I get why Jesus flipped that table. <laughs> what? Nothing. Oh, you, you snickered. I didn't. I laughed. Why? Because I just, every time I... I don't know. I, I, I think about Jesus flipping over tables a lot more than I should. <laughs> <laughs> a, a lot more than I should. What would Jesus do? Fuck this. Yeah. I'm, well, I mean, it, so everybody paints Jesus as this loving, forgiving person. Mm -hmm. But when the disrespect happened and he lost his poo, he lost his poo. And it wasn't like like it was it was a lot. Right. And it was because they were defiling God. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like they were the 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 people that were supposed to be the church were, were doing really foul shit. Right. And in like two things go in my mind. Like when people are like, what would Jesus do? I'm like, well, he has been known to flip tables. Mm -hmm. First miracle was turning water into wine and not just some wine, but like barrels Copious of wine amounts. Right. To make sure that everybody had a great time getting drunk at a wedding like they're celebrating. So like that answer would be it could be a lot of things. He would forgive. He could flip tables. He could perform miracles. And then I always think to myself, nowhere in the Bible does it say to be a pussy. 
Yeah. Nowhere does it say to be a bitch. Like there were numerous people killed in the name of God in the Bible. And like, there's great stories of warriors and like people like Joshua who was mm-hmm. sent behind enemy lines to kill a King. And like, the, so like, that's where my brain goes. So when you're like, now I get why Jesus flipped tables. That's where my brain went. Yeah. I'm like, that's right. Flip those tables. <laughs> Don't be a bitch. Like, but that, you know, that's my brain. It does that. I think I have such a strong moral <clears throat> compass that even when other people are feeling disrespected, I by proxy feel disrespected as a human being. Why is that? And is that a moral compass or is that you not like um, that you don't like to see injustices happening? Because I don't think that's a moral compass. I, why, why, why would that not be a moral compass? Because your frustration at seeing other people's suffrage is not a moral thing. It's a. Well, I mean, when it's by the hands of somebody else. It's an injustice. It's um, seeing injustice. other people suffer. I guess. I don't know. I'm just making shit up. I need a Bible, a dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a whole revelation right now. That's a lot for me to process. Yeah. Yeah. You should journal about it. I think about it, and eventually when I am ready, I do go back and watch whatever episode is causing me to throw a fit like a two-year-old, and I laugh, cry, get irritated, and whatnot, along with processing everything. I then take what I have gathered from that episode, and I use it in everyday life, and I'll be damned. It fucking works. Who would have thought, right? I find myself being more calm and understanding and knowing that not every little issue or concern is an attack to me. So now, when we need to have conversations, even if he gets verbally aggressive... I can diffuse him enough to redirect the conversation back to where it needs to be. That's awesome. I am so damn proud of myself for all of the growth I have gone through that I am still going through it. This past weekend was a tough weekend for us, and I addressed something that I noticed and bothered me very much. We were at a fight party, and I'll tell you, my husband's phone never leaves his hands like this thing is glued to him at all times. Well, at least around me. He put his phone down on the table next to me and continued to hang out with his friends. That seriously pissed me off because even when I try to talk to him or get his undivided attention, I never get that. Even if I approach him and tell him, hey, I have a concern that I would like to talk to you about, can you please put your phone down? He will, but about 10 minutes in, he has now disconnected and picked up his phone again. He knows he does this and it bothers me because once I stop talking, he notices several minutes later and says, sorry, I am listening now. I would also be irritated by that. I don't start speaking to you until you put your phone down. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, there are times where I can do both, but there are times that like, you'll start talking to me while I'm really in the middle of something and you'll notice that I'm in the middle of something. You'll be like, I'll wait. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, cool. What's up? Because now you know I'm standing there waiting <clears> on you. Right. Because sometimes you need my undivided attention and not just a conversation and passing and that matters. Yeah. So I have a challenge for everybody. If you're watching this podcast or listening to this podcast, at some point over the next seven days, I want you to go on a date with your partner and leave your phones on the console of your vehicle. Don't take them inside. No. If there's an emergency, the world can fucking wait an hour until you're done eating to, for that emergency to be dealt with. People are going to go, well, what about my kids? What about them? If an ambulance has to be called, are you going to be the ambulance driver? Are right. you going to be the doctor? So to say, if there's an emergency and you're already not home. Right. And you don't have somebody capable of handling an emergency watching your children. That's a larger problem. Yeah. Yeah, before the 2000s, people lived without phones attached to their hands. Like, that was a thing. Yeah, the last <coughs> almost 30 years, we've had cell phones and being able to be in contact with people instantly. Digital leash. For 300,000 years, that wasn't a thing, though. Mm-hmm. I think about that a lot. Yeah. Like me sitting here with my iPhone and iPad watching Sons of Anarchy, laying in a super comfy bed with AC. Yeah, when you look at the time span of of like how fast technology has grown over the last couple hundred years, um, we went from like not even being able to farm to where we are in like 300 years, 400 years. Like it's mm-hmm. it's crazy to the extent. I mean, obviously you were always able to farm, but for the most part, we were hunter gatherers, not farmers. Mm-hmm. And when you look at the timeline of things, it's a blip mm-hmm. of technology versus all of the the past history. Back into the email. So we were leaving the fight party. Oh, so as we were leaving the fight party, he was looking for his phone, which I had given to one of our children as we were walking out. He wasn't upset about it or anything. And when we got to the car, the five kids we had with us were laughing and joking as he opened my car door for me to get into the driver's seat. 
And I asked him, can you close the door? Because I have something I'd like to address. I'm assuming they had a conversation outside of the car. He wasn't upset about it or anything. And when we got to the car, the five kids we had with us were laughing and joking, as was he. He opened my car door for me to get in the driver's seat. And I asked him, can you close the door? Because I have something I would like to address. Okay, so the kids are in the car and they're standing outside. Okay. Yeah. I told him that I was shocked that for three hours that we were at a party, he did not pick up his phone once and gave his undivided attention to his friends. I asked him why I don't get that kind of undivided attention as his wife. His response was, I put my phone by you and you had it the whole time. I repeated my question once again, and with irritation, he stated the same response. So he deflected completely. Both times. Situation. I don't, I don't know. Be like, bitch, I know you heard me. <laughs> yeah. I, I would have been like, do I need to word this to you differently? Right. Because this has nothing to do with me having your phone. Like, what are you not understanding about my question? Right. Getting a little defensive, babe. What's going on? I just asked you, why can't I have that kind of attention when you and I are talking? Right. I'd have been like, this has nothing to do with me having your phone. Yeah. This is not me accusing you of talking to other people. This is me asking you, how come I can't have your undivided attention the way that you gave it to the people inside of the party? Mm -hmm. So he stated the same response with irritation. I then told him that I don't see this conversation going anywhere, so driving home would give us a little time to think things through as we were about 20 minutes from home. We only drove two cars in case any kids were just over hanging out and wanted to leave as our 18-year-old drives. When we arrived home, he completely ignored me, and I just went to bed as I had to get up Sunday to go to work. Oh, he's he petty spaghetti. Yeah, he got salty. He got caught out on his bullshit. I, I think that he, he might have taken that conversation as an accusatory thing. As like an attack? Yeah. Yep. He could have also, another hypothetical, has taken it as, she fucking put me on the spot. I had such a good night tonight. And now she's trying to find a reason to fight with me. Could be. This is one of those situations that could have been handled very differently, though. Mm -hmm. And that if she noticed that he did that for three hours and she felt a certain way about it, she could have simply asked him for a date where there's no phones. Right. Because there is an an accusatory statement there. And while they were on the date, you'd be like, I'm really enjoying this. Mm -hmm. Like, we're not connected to anything but each other right now. Like, you can make it a positive instead of, you know, it being a negative. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I... Obviously, there's a hundred thousand ways that these things could be handled, but yeah, I app- I appreciate that approach a whole lot more than how you know why can't you do that for me? Yeah, you know, there have been things that very well known that I dissect things and pick things apart in life. There have been times where there's a chain of events, right? Because it's never just something happens because it happens. There's always a chain of events. And in that chain of events, you might say something and I'd be like, oh, okay, didn't like that. Or I would do something and there was an action you would do afterwards. I'd be like, okay, well, why would you? Right. It's all me, all illogical bullshit, me jumping to conclusions, mental Olympics over here. And I take note of that shit. Not everything has to be a conversation. Like you said, it could have been a let's go on a date with no cell phones because he has shown you in this three hours he's capable of doing that. So... I take mental note and I'm like, okay. And I dissect the series of events leading up to it. What could I have done for the response to be different, for the tone to be different, for the delivery to be different? And then I just implement it. Mm -hmm. There's no defensiveness. There's no conversation. There's no, you were able to do it there. Why can't you do it with me? Like you said, I can see how that comes across as accusatory. Delivery matters. Mm Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and when there's hurt, people have a hard time not trying to make the other person feel like they're feeling. Mm-hmm. And the goal is to not have either one of you hurt because right. it's not the two of you versus each other. It's the two of you versus the problem. When you're hurt and you're trying to express that hurt, sometimes you're trying to do it in a way that hurts the other person. It's just not healthy. Yeah. So, But I, I do the same thing. And the coffee thing this morning with the frothed milk is the prime example of that. We could have We could have argued over that. Like that could have been a thing because you got defensive, mm. which I could have gotten defensive over. You know what I mean? And like that could have actually created a problem versus us just having a quick conversation about it. I also want to point out, I would not have tried to initiate that conversation standing outside of a car at a party. No, I wouldn't be with the kids in the car. That's, that's not a quick response. I'm sorry. That is, that needs to be a conversation when we're laying at home in bed and be like, Hey, I noticed this. Yeah. And when I saw that, I felt this way. 
there are times where I feel something or I think of something and I have to process it. So it might be four hours before I approach you with a conversation. It might be a few days because there's a time and place for it. When you're sitting at the computer editing and you're messaging Jordan and you're trying to coordinate shit with AJ, I'm not going to be like, hey, baby, you said this the other day. Why did you do that? Yeah. Back into the email. Before I went to sleep, I sent him a text message. I'm not upset, just hurt and disappointed to see that not being on your phone for not even once for a few hours is possible for you to do. Honestly, I didn't think that it was possible. So now she's attacking him. Furthermore attacking, yeah. Yeah. Why didn't you get out of bed and you're in the same house. Why didn't you get out of bed and go have a conversation with him? I now understand it all and that is okay. I now understand it all and that is okay. What a shitty thing to say. That was part of the email, the text message? Yes. So you're jumping to whatever conclusions you're having in your mind because there hasn't been a conversation about this. You, All you understand are your emotions toward this. That's what you're understanding. Also, how frequently are you trying to get his attention for things? If every time you sit down with him and you want to have his undivided attention, that's not going to be a thing. There are a lot of variables in life. And if there is a pertinent conversation that has to be had. And like you said prior, he can go 10 minutes without his phone and then he picks it up and is completely disassociated. He is clearly not engaged in what you're talking about. Right. At this party with his friends, he was fucking engaged. So the conversations you're trying to have with him, is it nitpicking? Are you nagging about something? Are you picking him apart? Is it a, a reoccurring conversation that you feel is unresolved, but there's nothing he can do to fix the situation? There's a lot of things that go into... That's a lot of hypotheticals right. that I went down. A lot of variables that can be going into why he does that versus why he was able to do it at the party. Did all of that make sense? It did. I, I think the bigger thing here is that she should be expressing the fact that she wants more quality time with him mm -hmm. and wants her wants him to fully engage with her. This is a request for connection, and it's being missed. And because it's being missed and then this happened, she got salty about it. Yeah. And instead of having the actual conversation that needs to be had, she's being accusatory and negative towards him. And that's not how you handle these things. Mm -hmm. you, you just can't do that. Like right. that's, that's definitely not the way you have these conversations. Imagine yeah. how different that conversation would have went if she would have waited until the next morning, made him coffee or breakfast or whatever their morning routine is and said, do you think we can go on date nights without our phones like once a week or, um, I had a really good time last night. I was just about to say the way I would do that. I had a lot of fucking fun last night. <clears throat> Neither of us were on our phones. Let's plan a date like that. Yep. Would have been a very different conversation. There would have been no hurt there. There would have been no defensiveness there. He would have been like, you know what? I had a really good time last night too. Mm -hmm. You're right. Let's do a date without the phone. Like let's, let's just not be connected to, to the devices for at least an hour a week. You guys could have had a conversation about implementing an hour before bed yeah. of no phones. I, I normally don't fuck with my phone until after you've fallen asleep. Like, I yeah. will stand on, at the end of my bed and then put my phone down and, like, we'll put my phone on do not disturb, even if it's 7 o'clock at night, mm -hmm. until you fall asleep. And then I'll grab my phone and I'll play my game. Yeah. But I try not to do that just in case you want to have a conversation. Sometimes I'll do it while you are still laying on me because I can tell you're sleeping, whether it's a, a weird breathing or a body twitch. But that is a, it's an unspoken, we're not doing the phone thing in bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my phone goes under my pillow. Which is really dangerous, by the way. I know. I just, it's easier for me if the kids wake me up or something for me to grab it silently versus fumbling shit on my nightstand trying to get my phone so I don't miss my alarm. In the yeah, morning. I would rather you fumble for your phone than have your phone explode underneath your pillow. Okay. I meant to say something to you about that the other night when I noticed that yeah. it TikTok was running while it was under your pillow. It was. Yeah. Yeah. So... When I have a thought process of, I didn't like the way that that played out. I, like I said, I dissect the things. And then I always ask myself, what do I want from this situation? More quality time, more attention, more intimacy. Kiss me in the morning before you start your day, whatever it is. And then that's how I approach you with it. Right. Hey, babe, I would really love it if you did more of this. It makes me feel important to you. And because you enjoy me being happy... All right, babe, I got you. I'll try to do that more. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly how those conversations go with us. That's always how those conversations go with us. Yeah. And that's a lot. You're getting the same outcome that you wanted 
the way you presented it the first time. It's just a smoother path to get to it. Right, because you're making a request, not a demand. Right. You're not being accusatory. There's no negativity there. You are giving me the opportunity to make you happy yeah. without shitting on me in the process. Mm -hmm. Because if you say, you do X, Y, Z versus can you please because it will make me happy. Right. Very, very different conversation. Uh, this text message does not get any better. Ooh, so much for this being a feel good. <laughs> so she says, I now understand it all and that is okay. It does hurt to know that we are just not a priority for your undivided attention. Ooh. So it went from her not being able to get the unprovided attention. To now the kids too. To now it's the whole family unit. So not are you just failing me, you're failing your children. And that is okay because that is your choice and I respect that. I just want you to know I'm not upset or angry, just disappointed and hurt. Damn. Damn. She hit him with the I'm just disappointed. That whole text message was super shitty, and I would not have sent that. Yeah, I wouldn't have either. Um, that is not it. <laughs> that is something that you write in your notes to get out of your system, and the next and morning it. you delete it. Yeah, put that shit in your phone's notepad. Yeah. And then delete it when you're done. Write an angry email and don't send it type shit. Yeah. I then went to bed and woke up around 5 a.m. and noticed that he wasn't in the bed, which is not like him. Well, I... I can't say that I blame him. I would not have come to bed after that text message either. Yeah, that was pretty shitty. I would have slept in the living room or something. So I text him again, which wasn't the smart choice, but in all caps, I did it anyway. So I guess sleeping alone is a punishment. And so is the oath of silence. Either way, if it is or isn't, I don't deserve this for expressing how I feel. So you were intentional. You were intentional with... Trying to make him hurt the way that you were hurting. Yeah, you're. that is an <clears throat> eye for an eye shit. It absolutely is. It absolutely is. He was just having a good time at a party with his friends. His woman's there. His kids are there. Everyone's having fun. And it turned into conflict. And it turned into massive conflict, immediately leaving the house. Yep. He opened her car door to get her into the car, and she was like, close that. I need to talk to you. Yep. And I'm willing to bet he didn't see any of it coming. I bet he was definitely blindsided with all of that it sucks to go from the high of tonight's such a good night like we're all here doing the thing everybody's having fun yep. and then just sails knock the wind knocked out of your sails yeah that, that whole that whole text message thing is a problem anyways you don't you don't do that no you don't you don't have those kind of conversations on text message because even if you didn't mean it to be shitty mm -hmm. we read it as shitty imagine how he feels after having an argument yeah 80% 80, 80 nonverbal communication. Tone, inflection, body language, the words that you choose to use, mm -hmm. all of that shit matters. This is the, the wording, the intention with the words, all of that comes across as very vindictive to me. How is this a feel-good email? It's got to get better. I hope so. All right. So now it's kind of a back and forth between text messages. He texted right back, so at 5 a.m., I fell asleep right after the show and didn't give you my phone to give them my undivided attention. I gave it to you because it fell out of my pocket twice and I didn't want to forget where I put it. I believe that. I always ask you, if you say something and it hits me the wrong way, bitch, I know I got BPD. I, I know that I am over here sitting like Harley Quinn. So if I don't understand something or something rubs me the wrong way, what did you mean by that? Can you explain that? I don't understand. And I would say 9.8 out of 10 times when you give me your elaboration, I 100% took it the wrong way. My mind twisted it. I saw it through my cognitive bias. And every single time that I'm rubbed the wrong way, it's dissipated simply because I just asked you what, why? Yeah. You don't even know that I'm upset when I ask you. No, most of the time I don't. Sometimes I can feel it. Yeah but it's not often, but you always ask for clarification. That's I one do. of the, that's one of the tools of communication that we use mm -hmm. to eliminate assumptions. Yeah. So he gave it to her because it kept falling out of his pocket. This makes me furious because you're judging me by my actions while I was paying attention to the fight. How many fights have we watched together? How many times have I been somewhere and misplaced my phone? The answer is numerous times to both questions. You chewed my ass for fucking up the towels. Then shortly after, chewed my ass for not getting on my phone. 
he just kind of outed you a little bit. You chewed his ass up over towels. It's funny because I was just about to say I don't care about the back and forth in the emails. We know that this isn't the way that we handle things, and we've already addressed that, so we should move on. Mm. But I'm glad I didn't say that because now we know she was nagging earlier about the towels. Right. The, this gives a lot of insight. This is the shit that I look for. I want to know what your conversations look like. Right, because it matters. It certainly does matter. I promise you I'll never ask to go to another outing ever again. Remember what I said earlier about the way that you handle things and how that can change an entire perspective on something? He doesn't want to go out with you anymore. No. Nope. That whole outing, that whole experience could have been a good night. It could have been something that could have happened again because he had a good time. Right. And because of the meltdown, it's now a no for him. Uh, so she added in parentheses. The whole towel thing is he took wet towels that were drying out of the dryer and put them aside to dry his clothes that he had just washed. I asked him not to do that as it creates mold and I would have to trash them. He responded with, well, what was I supposed to do? Why were there wet clothes in the dryer? Right. Well, the real question is, is you would rather him not have clothes over having to buy new towels? Can't you just rewash the towels? You could. You could have just rewashed the towels. Right. It's mildew, not... <clears throat> he could have literally pulled them out, stuck them in the basket, dried what he needed real quick, and then threw everything in there and dried them again. There there are steps that could have been taken. Yeah. He could have, he could have checked the dryer mm -hmm. before starting his load of wash to make sure the towels were actually dry. Yeah. There's a whole lot of things that could have happened there. A lot of missteps. Yeah. My response, I didn't chew your ass for the towels. I simply asked you to not... I simply asked you to not just disregard clothes that are drying because you want to dry your clothes. If I hadn't come to you with a concern without a defense going up, we definitely need help. Do you think that the dryer was running and he just stopped the dryer, pulled everything out, threw his clothes in and started the dryer? Because if so, that's fucking shitty. That is really shitty. That's yeah. childish behavior. However, if he wanted something specific and it wasn't clean... And they were getting ready to go out. I can understand stopping the dryer to dry your shirt mm -hmm. or like a pair of pants because maybe he works outside and his pants are all dirty. He has one pair of nice pants. We don't know. Right. That matters. But in that scenario, knowing that there was a fight fixing to happen and you guys were going to do something together out and about, one of you should have taken the precaution earlier to make sure that those things were clean. I don't know. That that scenario is funny to me, but it, it, I, I can understand that I can understand or see that there's a lot of different scenarios that could have played out there. And it's all what ifs. Right. I am very weird about my clothes. And if I want to wear a specific shirt and we were going somewhere nice and I wanted that specific shirt and it was dirty, I would have a meltdown over it. Mm -hmm. Like whether it was my fault or not, you know right. what I mean? If I can't come to you with a concern without a defense going up, we definitely need help. Well, it depends on how you came at him. Right. So not talking was, about the towels. Because if it was like the text message, that's not a... Cons that's Yeah. I'm going to go as far back to standing outside the car at the party trying to address the problem. You don't do that. Yeah. There's a time and place. And a way. So if you can't approach a conversation in a way that's going to be productive in a appropriate setting, you guys need help. Agreed. You can't just blame him for the problems in the relationship. <clears throat> you approach this whole situation poorly... And the whole outcome could have been changed if, hey, babe, I'll see you when I get home. Thank you for opening my car door. Yeah. This is one of those moments where you let your emotions control you. If I can't come to you about something that I see and how it makes me feel, then we need help. From him, is it possible to go back and look at the text that you sent me? When you're reading them, envision a grown man reading them. Then think how that grown man would feel being talked to like he is a child. Yep. From the woman, I am your wife. The woman that you chose to spend the rest of your life with. I should be your priority. I don't feel like it should be a back and forth on any of these issues that we have. So she, she he should just submit to the woman? That's what I'm reading. You should yes. just take what I say and accept that you fucked up in this moment because that's how I feel. Because that sounds like mother shit, not wife shit. Yeah. From him, it's not your tone, it's the words you chose to get your point across. Me, there is no other way to put it. If you feel like what I'm telling you is talking to you like a child, that is between you and your mind. That's manipulation. It, it's also wrong because of what she said right. in the text right before that one. 
I have 100% looked at our children. They hit me with, Mommy, are you mad? No, I'm not mad. I am disappointed in you, though. Right. You are very much the aggressor in this email between these text messages. Like, the, the emailer is very much the aggressor, and it is my way or the highway. My word is law. I'm your wife, but I'm going to treat you like I'm your mother. <clears throat> I really hope that she went back and read those emails and, and apologized. I hope so. Or the so. text messages, I mean. I don't understand how this is a feel-good email because this doesn't feel good. From him, I think uh, going back to that the prior message, saying that it's between you and your mind, that is very much that trying to make them feel crazy mm. in the situation. From him, sometimes I want to send conversations into the podcast to see what they would say. He said that? He said that. Oh, he's a fan too. Um, Love that. Hope you're listening, bro. <laughs> From the emailer, because I'm serious, this isn't a game. I am over being disrespected, treated like I don't matter and pushed aside. I don't deserve it. From him, I understand the baseline now and I won't ever cross it again. Me, I'm okay if you want to send our conversation. I'm not embarrassed for trying to express my feelings to my husband on how his actions make me feel like I'm just some side chick. What? Where the fuck did that come from? I guess the not giving the undivided attention. From him, there is something more here than a phone just being left on the table because I have never treated you like a side chick. Yeah, yeah, there absolutely is something more than that. It was my idea to take you to the movies. It was me listening to you say you liked it when I opened your car door, which he did leaving the party. And you stopped it to create an argument. Is that me treating you like a side chick? Laying my phone down on the table and walking away while you were talking, there is something more than just a phone here, question mark. Emailer, your tactics won't work on me anymore. The more I go to therapy, self-reflect, and work on myself teaches me how to deflect the venom that you spit at me. Your tactics won't work, so you'll have to find new ones. That was one night, and one night doesn't make up for years. From him, okay. Ma'am, you are the one who is spinning venom. You sent a very aggressive, passive-aggressive text message before going to bed and then getting upset that there was not a response. So in turn, you sent a very nasty, another very nasty text message of, oh, silent treatment. Got it. Can we talk about weaponized therapy? Okay. So she's going to therapy. And she's telling her therapist her side of things. Mm -hmm. Assuming he has not gone to therapy and the therapist has not heard any of this. It's only been her view of the situation. Right. He's probably been called a manipulator and a narcissist and a gaslighter and stonewalled and all the fucking buzzwords because that's what people do. And now her therapy sessions that is one sided is being used against him to make him the enemy. Right. Uh, the villain. That is a problem. Yeah. There is a lot of twisting of reality in this. From the emailer, you're inconsistent. And when you do one good thing, you think it trumps all of the bad that you have done. And that is not the way it works. You don't get to be a husband part time. It's 24 seven, like being a dad. I am your wife and I should be your priority. From him, I have no further responses to give. I haven't been a good man and your feelings towards me and about me are yours to have. I'm not invalidating them. I just thought things were becoming much better. This conversation continues. I would like to address this part first and get your thoughts on it. As he stated, he wants to know too. We are fine with this going on the podcast. Just don't mention our names. If I happen to put them in there, that is my only request. If you would like the rest of the conversation, I'm willing to type it all out when I'm able to. I don't. Uh, well, it's here. Oh, I'm guessing they got the editors. Um, the wizards probably got the rest of the email. Correct. Okay. Can we talk about perspective being reality? Per um, perception, perception being reality? Because he said that he is making changes. He's opening the car door for her. He's taking her to the movies, taking her to fight nights, being more present in the home and trying to actively become a better husband for her because that's the things that she's asked for. And because he's doing it and it still didn't meet her standards, it's not enough. She wants to throw him in the face, throw it in his face, make him the villain, use the therapy that she's been going to against him. 
She wants to then negate the fact that he is actually making changes and trying. If I was this man, my response to her was be like, cool, I'm not going to try anymore. Because all of the efforts that I have put in is now being weaponized and thrown in my fucking face and telling me that I'm not good enough. Yeah. That's a fucking problem. It is. Would you like something to drink? I am a little parched. Yes, please. Learning to be accountable part two. So I have a tiny issue with being able to send the rest of that conversation. I did not save it to my Google Drive like I thought I did. I do, however, have some eye-opening things that have happened after all of that happened. My husband and I, over the last few months, have really been working on ourselves and our marriage. I think constantly listening to To Be Better hit a rock with him and I. We have started communicating better. Our intimacy, respect, and love for one another has definitely blossomed into something I truly thought I could never have. We were able to sit down with one another and have decent conversations without it ending up in a screaming match. We are no longer holding on to any resentments that we may have with one another. I can't exactly pinpoint when it clicked. It just did. What the hell? How did that change from, from that last email to this? I'm assuming there's months between them. Okay. I also don't believe that. I, I don't believe that that just is gone. Yeah. I, I don't believe that that happened. I think that they probably resolved some of their shit and they don't want it to be seen. Yeah. Or that she realized that she was in the wrong or he realized he was really in the wrong and was like, hey, I don't want that on the internet. Yeah. That I think that's probably more likely. Mm -hmm. I started to really take in what Peaches says about putting her man first. Even though in my mind, he's a grown man who can take care of himself. Her point is a valid point. Women don't seem to understand that putting your husband first isn't woman's downfall. Downfall. Even if society says that it is, that's bullshit. I have never felt so strong as I do now in my marriage. And that all starts with just putting him first. This, there was a catalyst. Right. Something happened between these two emails that really changed the relationship. Mm -hmm. All he wanted was to be a priority. Not to the world, just to me. Once I understood that that was what he wanted, I started to re receive security, love, understanding, and respect. Something happened. In all of those text messages to him, she's screaming about how I'm not a priority to you. The family's not a priority to you. I understand it. That's your choice. It is what it is. I'm just letting you know I'm disappointed and hurt. Flip point two, all he wanted to be was a priority to me. So there was a catalyst. Something happened between these emails that was a drastic change. That's a lot. With me taking accountability for myself and my downfalls, I created a positive reaction that continues to grow. So much so that our children are calmer, happier, and starting to take accountability for themselves and their choices, good or bad. Our parenting has calmed down. We don't yell constantly. We have less fights between the kids, and we actually have family conversations. We are no longer living in seclusion and just bumping into each other. We function more as a team now with love and respect. That's definitely mind-blowing. That's something I was fighting against for so long just came so easily. Something happened. Right. I wonder if she realized that she was the one that was the aggressor in all of this and, and stopped. Maybe. There's a catalyst. Mm -hmm. Something changed. Yeah. Holy shit, did something change. I'm grateful for Chris and Peaches and all the hard work, time, and effort that they put into themselves for the world to see. Both my husband and I would have never known how a marriage is actually supposed to work without their guidance. I would have never known that I was longed for. I would have. I would have never known that what I longed for and dreamed about could be in my grasp. My husband opens doors for me now. He can't keep his hands off of me. Same for me with him. Our home atmosphere is so peaceful and calm. It's crazy. We love spending whatever time that we have with each other and understand that it's quality, not quantity. Even my therapist is shocked at how fast I have grown in these last few months that my visits with her are just once a month maintenance visits. I continue to support, listen, and watch all videos when I can. Thanks to Peaches, mostly I can clearly see what my role is in my man's... Thanks to Peaches, mostly, I can see clearly what my role is as my man's wife. I know and understand that it is my responsibility to make sure he's loved, cherished, and prioritized above anyone else. As much as I thought putting our children first along with work and everything else would get me what I longed for from him, she proved to me that I was sadly mistaken. You don't get what you don't put out. You cannot expect to receive in life what you are not willing to do the work of yourself. You would not be the man for me if I was not the woman I am for you. Right. 
you have said that you have never had the type of vulnerability or connection or emotions that you have with me. You've never experienced that with another woman. I think that goes to show that you put out, you receive the energy that you put out. Right. There's a lot, there's a lot more to that though, <clears throat> because in you saying that it doesn't, it doesn't even scratch the surface of, of how different things are. And it's because there's not a combativeness <clears throat> and there's small things, right? And, and something happened today and I'm gonna give you the prime example of it, right? This morning I was like, we can get episode 44 done. You can go do the kid, the kid thing, and then I can go to the Har I want to go to the Harley dealership. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, what about me? And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, we're going, we're going to the Harley, Harley dealership. Like, but in me saying that to you, I want to go to the Harley dealership. You meant, well, if you're going to go, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. That wasn't the conversation. Of course, I want you to go with me because we've been talking about getting Harleys now for like three weeks. Mm -hmm. You just clarified. I was like, of course you're going, babe. We're, we want to go look at bikes. And then we had another conversation shortly afterwards. That could have been a fight. You could have taken that opportunity to be like, you only think about yourself. What about me? And like, you could have really fucking dialed in on me mm -hmm. because you're not combative, because you gave me the opportunity to explain what I meant. I'm telling you, I want to go to the Harley dealership today. That's my goal for the day. It doesn't mean that I don't want you to go. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to lay out my plan for the day. If you have different plans, tell me. Mm -hmm. And that's what I meant by that. So if you were like, well, I can't go to the Harley dealership. We have poker at 530 and between 2 and 530, I'm not going to be here. I have to go get my nails done. I'm like, okay, well, then maybe we'll go tomorrow. That would have been the conversation. Right. But because you didn't assume and didn't get combative and didn't create an argument you wanted to, to make sure that I was including you in that. And you did it in a very peaceful manner. We had a very calm conversation. Mm -hmm. That's the type of shit that allows me to have the feelings that you laid out a minute ago about the things that I've said in the past, because that was a very easy conversation to have. Right. It allows me to talk to you in a way that I normally converse or talk or the way that I verbalize things mm -hmm. without having to walk on eggshells to have those conversations. Right. So our, our conversation is a much easier flow. Right. And because of that, it trickles into everything else. It's like the champagne tier where you fill the top glass up and it, it fills all down. the way down. It's the same thing. Yeah. I want to know what changed in their relationship. Me too. I'm willing to bet something happened where she was like, oh shit, maybe I am the problem. Mm -hmm. And and I'm glad that she got it from the podcast because I got to be honest, I don't think the therapist was doing the job because she went from weaponizing her therapy to be like, now it's just maintenance. Yeah. That's a massive shift, a massive change. Yeah. In months, because it hasn't been that long. Podcast isn't even a year old yet. Right. Back into the email. Our work has also benefited as we have both received promotions. So to everyone out there in the world that believes that you can't take a sharp U-turn in life, they're just disappointing themselves. You have to look deep within yourself and hold yourself accountable for your own actions. The rest just seem to fall into place how it should be. So with that, keep doing what you are doing because it doesn't fall on deaf ears in my world. If people want to change, they will. And if they don't, well, that's their loss. It definitely became a feel-good email. I did not see it going that route. Me either. Come on. I, I know that we don't know the catalyst, but I really hope that, like, she calmed down. And, like, two or three weeks after she got calm, she read through those messages and realized that she was being the aggressor. Mm -hmm. And there was a whole lot of, oh, my God, I'm the problem. Yeah. And the, the problem got corrected. I really fucking hope that's what it was. Yeah, me too. And I hope that there's gratitude. I hope that she realizes like, hey, I shouldn't have said that to you because you were trying and I recognize it, but I was angry in the moment and I shouldn't have said that. And, mm -hmm. you know, moving forward, I'm going to learn to communicate with you. And you, you know what I mean? Like it's like night and day in those emails. Yeah. Well, that, she followed up with, you can take a U-turn in life. The fucking email did. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Got whiplash. You guys are drifting, <laughs> hitting that e-brake and sliding around the corner in the rain. Like, yeah. Yeah, you guys came close as fuck to that wall as you were going around the corner, too. It was like a, a really good high-speed movie scene. Yeah. <laughs> Got anything else you want to add? That, that ended up being way longer than uh, I intended it. No, not really. Feeling a certain way about that first email. Yeah, still? Yeah, I think it's the d domestic violence and the blasé about all of it. She was pretty nonchalant about the whole thing. So right. Not a big deal. Oh, she's rushing. Do you hear all that? No. I'm apparently ready for lunch. Okay. <laughs> all right, guys. With that being said, remember you are the authors of your own life. So grab a pen. And we will see you on the next one. Bye, guys.